fellow dream chasers and Disney fans across the world, and welcome to the latest episode of Kingdom of Isolation, where in times of trouble, why not isolate yourself with the magic of Disney? Just for a bit of context, folks, uh, like you'll have seen in the intro there, I, I am recording these episodes somewhat out of order, but uh, rest assured, this is still going to go up in release order, so don't worry about that. Uh, but we are here tackling the penultimate film of the 70s. It's the first package film that Disney have done since the adventures of Ichabod and Mr. Toad way back in 1949, 28 years ago. It's our first foray into the adventures of Winnie the Pooh with the many adventures of Winnie the Pooh released in 1977, comprising of three shorts, uh, Winnie the Pooh and the Honey Tree, Blustery Day and Tigger too but of course it wouldn't be the king of isolation without having a guest on board he was with me way back for our foray into wonderland with alice in wonderland but he's back here it's alan Sunter. alan welcome back hello i'm glad to be back oh my well, well, say, oh, I'll say this, i mean this i mean this film is just an absolute gem based on the works of a.a a. mill i say an oh. absolute gem not not just for uh, not just for the um, uh, uh, the children's literature market, but also kickstarting effectively a multimedia franchise that is still going to this day, folks. Yeah, like Winnie the Pooh is just one of the most iconic characters. Like you don't even have to have read any of the original stories, or may maybe even not even necessarily seen any of the cartoons. You just see a picture of Pooh Bear and you just know who he is and what yeah. exactly he's all about. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and, 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 and for the fan theorists out there, don't worry. I know exactly what fan theory you guys are on about. So uh, I think it's probably best not to touch on there. That little um, dark corner there, but uh, I say, uh, you, you guys will know the one. <laughs> this I'll is say, a I'll happy say, place. I'll, yeah. I'll say, is it, you, you know exactly the fan theory I'm on about here. <laughs> yeah let, let's uh, let's move slightly on shall we <laughs> yes but yeah but i say this is winnie the pooh's uh i say uh technically this isn't uh winnie the uh, pooh bear's first foray into the big screen because like i said it's based on it's uh comprising of three shorts the first one winnie the pooh and the honey tree then you've got the oscar winning blustery day which introduced us to tigger for the first time and then and then became a household name with Winnie the Pooh and Tigger 2. There was actually a fourth short, uh, Winnie the Pooh and the Day for Eeyore, that was uh, made as well. That, mm. uh, that's actually part of one of the anniversary editions of uh, the film on DVD. That's right, yeah. But uh, we'll, we'll touch on all of that when we get to uh, the scores. So, yes. shall we head into the 100 Acre Wood? I don't see why not. And I've come prepared. I've got myself a cup of Earl Grey with honey. Hey, uh, I, I, wish, I wish I had the honey. I wish I had honey on my end. But uh, apple and pear, it's a fair compromise. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, that works perfectly fine. Yeah, but of course, uh, and as always, just to be on the safe side, spoiler alert in place if you guys still haven't uh, seen this film yet. But uh, I say, Check it's, it out. It's a delight. Absolutely. I say it is. I say it's just tradition at this point that I just put the spoiler alert in place. Uh, on the off chance okay. there's like some younger viewers that might not be as clued in on uh, some of the older Disney films as uh, as we are. But nevertheless, let's head into our first trip of, into the Hundred Acre, Acre Wood with the many adventures of Winnie the Pooh. And yes, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So th this is this is a thing that I've managed to incorporate into this series now. Being able to get like uh, the uh, uh, concept art, if you will, of uh, of the films uh, in question. And uh, there we go, trespassers. Will we'll touch on that? I like uh, it. We'll touch on it shortly. Uh, but yeah, here we uh, go. It is our first trip into the Hundred Acre Wood here, we, uh, we actually start off in Christopher Robin's uh, bedroom where we also get introduced to his characters somewhat in uh, live action form. We actually see all the toys of uh, the characters. You've got Owl, Piglet, Pooh, Tigger, all, all, all the characters that are gonna be part of this film. And you even hear that beautiful Winnie the Pooh theme in the background, no joke. Yes. I, I mean, I found myself singing along to practically all the songs throughout, uh, throughout the film when uh, when watching it, mm -hmm. for for the purpose of yes, this. It's, it's not just so iconic and so just you know wholesome. 
Yeah. It was like, uh, very catchy at the same time. Yeah. Very catchy. Yeah. So, so first off, the first short, Winnie the Pooh and the Honey Tree, uh, after we yeah. get the narration from Sebastian Cabot, who was, who oh. has been, yeah, he has been in a lot of Disney projects uh, previously. He's uh, so good. Yeah, he was in he was in other he was in a lot of Disney projects as well. He was uh, Lord Ector uh, in the Sword in the Stone, which you, which you can find. And he was absolute. Some... Yep, he was Go absolutely ahead. hilarious in that role. Yeah, uh, and on top of that, you can all, you can see my thoughts on the uh, Sword in the Stone alongside all the episodes in the Kingdom of Isolation so far in the playlist in the top right of your screens. Uh, yeah, he, he was he was also the narrator there in uh, that one as well. So no stranger to narration, mm. if you will. Uh, he yes, was, yeah. And uh, a few years afterwards, he was Bagheera in the uh, uh, in the Jungle Book, and he and uh, again, again, like I say, he was also the narrator for the uh, Winnie the Pooh shorts, and also combining them all together for this film. Uh, and then we get, and then of course we hear. How I have missed listening to those opening songs in the Disney films. How I have missed that. Uh, oh, like, yeah. it's, it's, a, it's a lost art. Yeah. It's like, they don't make them like they used to, folks. They don't make them like they used to. No, they certainly do not. But yeah. Uh, once, once the song's out of the way, we get introduced to the characters. I mean, I mean a lot of the stuff there is misspelt. Now... Uh, but if anything, that that adds to the charm of this film. You know I mean? you know I mean? you, you'd assume that the way it's misspelled, you'd assume that the way it's misspelled, it's uh, written by written by kids. I mean, that adds to yeah. the charm of it all. Yes, it, and and that's the the perfect word for it there, charm. And and I think that's like the whole thing about the appeal of Winnie the Pooh as a whole. It, it's just such an embodiment of just this childhood innocence. You know, yeah. there's so much, so much sweetness and charm to everything there. Indeed, and uh, once, and then once we hear that, I once we hear that iconic song in all its glory, vocals and all, uh, we start off with the Honey Tree short, where you've got uh, Pooh in his, at his little uh, campfire outside his Mister Sanders home in gold letters, might I add? Uh, here's naturally. Here's, he ends up hearing his uh, puku, his uh, his puku clock. I mean, I mean, <laughs> I mean that 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 in itself is already well played on the on on the uh, on the puns front. I wonder if anyone's ever tried to make um, an official replica of the puku clock. <laughs> that wouldn't actually surprise me. <laughs> that would not surprise me. In the slightest. And um, speaking of um, uh, Puku clocks and that, and of course, um, uh, Pooh himself, uh, that leads me yep. to my first um, bit of trivia about uh, Winnie the Pooh, and Here probably my favorite bit of trivia. Um, mm -hmm. As you know, he's uh, voiced wonderfully in this by the great Sterling Holloway. Um, yep. Another long time but, uh, Disney. Na yeah, he's also a long time uh, Disney collaborator. Mm -hmm. As well, he's done mm -hmm. a lot. He was the stork. He was Mr. Stork in Dumbo. He was the he was Adult Flower in uh, Bambi, Professor Holloway in the uh, Three Caballeros. He was in Make My Music. Uh, he he's done mm -hmm. a lot of Disney stuff, including the Cheshire Cat in Alice in Wonderland yep. as well. That's he right. was, but he um... was also sorry. Uh, he was also Car. He was also Car the Snake in uh, the Jungle Book and Roquefort in the Aristocats. Yes, um, but uh, uh, it's, it's always surprising to when you realize that, you know, you hear that um, sweet Winnie the Pooh voice or that, you know, high voice. Voices, you always assume that he's he's got to be putting that on. That can't be his actual voice. But no, that was his um, natural voice. Huh. And now whenever um, Jim Cummings is playing Winnie the Pooh, ah, yes. there's one line. One one sentence that he heard um, Sterling Holloway say, which always gets him into character. I don't know if I've told you this um, story before. I... As a matter of fact, you have in the Alice in Wonderland episode. I did, yes. But yes. Uh, but uh, let, let, let's let's hear it again for the let's hear it again. Worth repeating. Um, <laughs> yeah, 
sitting um, uh, in a um, Jim Cummings sitting in a cafe that Sterling Holloway himself happened to be at. And in the background, Jim Cummings hears the waitress going to the table and saying, so um, have we decided what we'll be ordering? And you just hear that he, he heard this little voice saying, I believe I will have the chowder. <laughs> And and then and then and then afterwards, Jim's like, "Is that Winnie the Pooh?" He's like, "No." <laughs> oh, I say, I say, I I, say, I absolutely love that story. I say, I say, I mean, as a big Disney fan myself, even I say, I'm I'm always looking forward to hearing new stuff. And when I heard that story for the first time, I thought, "Wow, that's something I definitely didn't know." <laughs> it, and again it's just such a sweet story as well yeah <laughs> but uh yeah let's say um let's say he um let's say the puku clock goes off he's uh he, he knows it's time for something uh think 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 <laughs> think 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 and then he, he, he asks um his his reflection in the mirror <laughs> I haven't thought of oh. anything have you oh yeah and 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 the reflection is just staring back at him, and you're just like, he's like, nope, neither have I. And then and then you just hear the little, uh, you hear that uh, ascending glissando, and then and then then yeah, light bulb moment, and then the stompness exercises, or flickering ear moment. Yes, stompness <laughs> exercises. <laughs> oh, I must say, I must say, I say, I mean, throughout the entire. I mean, throughout the entire film, especially throughout this first short, I was sitting here, big Cheshire cat grin on my face. I was, it was just yeah. adorable re to re see. Watching, re watching that scene in 2021, I just thought, lockdown vibes right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, and uh, talking of which, folks, uh, we're recording this on May 11th. Uh, so uh, when May 17th rolls around, we're going to be into level two. And cinemas open up again. Yes! 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 But don't uh -huh. worry. But don't worry. Kingdom of Isolation will still be continuing. Because good, good. Yeah, because this this is a long term project. This ain't going anywhere anytime soon. If a Disney film gets released, you can guarantee there'll be an episode on it later down the road. But we've got to get through as the long animated. As Disney's here. This is here. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we've got the animated films to get through, especially the Renaissance period. I will get to that. I will say, rest assured, I, on, I am on course to get it done during the summer before I before I head to college to do childcare. Um, then, then I've got the Pixar films to do. Might cover the live action films after that as well. And then it'll just be a case of as and when films get released that uh, I'll uh, start covering the films as and when they get released. But I, I, I'll... Um, but what I'll be doing is I'll be giving it like a, a three month window, if you will, similar to what they do with Disney Plus for the Premier Access. With, they did that with uh, Ryan and the Last Dragon and the live action Mulan remake. They, I say they started off giving mm. that on Premier Access, and then three months later, it's available for free on uh, as part of the Disney Plus uh, subscription. So uh, I'll be giving it a three month window to give as many people as possible to be able to get the chance to watch the Disney films before I talk about them in the Kingdom of Isolation. Which, which, which I think, which I think is a good enough strategy, if you ask me. Yeah, yeah, that seems fine. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, let's say. Yeah, stout, stoutness yes. exercises. Oh, classic. Dear. Let's say, let's say he's he just about finishes them, and oh no, he get he gets a little rip on the back, and and he's just like, oh, oh, st oh, stuffed and fluff, and then he just he just ties it all back together, and I'm just thinking, people, I say. I mean, yes. I mean, I mean, any normal person would have um, just tried to sew it back together, but uh, but the, the way I see, he just ties it back together. He's just like all back together, and then and then he hears his uh, he, he, blah, he hears his rumbly and his tumbly. Time for something <laughs> sweet, and that sweet thing being the honey, of course. <laughs> oh yes, can't do without it. Yeah. And, and again, honey spelt H H U N N Y. Because, yeah, of course. <laughs> Yeah, I say, I say, I say again, tying into uh, tying into what I said earlier about uh, all all the words being somewhat uh, misspelt because you because you'd assume mm -hmm. it's like uh, the way they're spelled is how kids would spell it. I would imagine. But, yeah, you, uh, you can you can see the the um, ch child logic behind it. Spell it how you hear it. Yeah, 
which which further adds which further adds to the charm of the film. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, uh, he's got he's got that out That's of the way. We have the we Go have ahead. the first dilemma. He's he's out of honey apart from apart from the sticky parts. <laughs> yeah, and then, and then and then we hear and then we hear one of the bees come in to his uh, house and. This is, uh, see, that was, see, that to me is a very clever bit of um, sound design because they couldn't, because they couldn't really use actual B sound, uh, B sound effects for that. So, mm. so, so, so they, they must, I say, they must have had some sort of creative process to be able to get it somewhat close to um, a, uh, a B buzzing, uh, but, but yes, having that but sort also of like, still have like that kind of, well. yeah. Exactly. Yeah, and, and and I love how he hears. I love how he hears that B. How when Winnie the Pooh walks us through the the logic that going through his head. The only reason <laughs> I can think of for making a buzzing is because you're a B, and the only reason for making for being a B is to, is make, to make honey. honey. And the only reason for making honey is so I can eat it. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Uh, yeah, it makes perfect sense. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, and then there we and then he and then uh, and then we get uh, uh, it's, a, it's our third song of our third song of the film. Uh, I say, um, I say there, are, there are plenty of songs in the soundtrack. Uh, yes, there's there's actually ten songs in the uh, in the soundtrack of this film, and that's and that's without taking the score into into account as well. Mm -hmm. But 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 I think but I think if anything. I think if anything, the songs actually work in the film's favor. Yeah, like it, it, it doesn't feel like there's a, it never feels like, all right, we're taking a pause here just to have a, a whole song because the songs never really overstay their welcome. They're yeah. nice and, you know, short and sweet. Yeah. And let's say, and then Pooh almost gets almost gets to his honey and then the branch snaps and he's just like boing 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 and oof into the gorse bush <laughs> where we get our first oh bother <laughs> the first of many folks and, and, say, and you, can, you can even hear the narrator laughing at the fact that uh Pooh has to just dust himself off yeah and, and i love how even um the narrator feels like a character because the the characters talk have conversations with the narrator. Too. Yeah, which 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 ties in which ties into one of my notes that I put in uh, um, about midway, uh, up, probably about a third of the way down in my notes. That um, there are even occasions during the film where it feels like they effectively break the fourth wall. They do, yeah, but in a very very clever way which yeah. you know you don't often see that like they're not saying hello to the audience but they are acknowledging that they are in a book and i don't mean say oh um we're characters in the book no you, they literally show that they are existing yeah. in the book yeah absolutely and then and then we get and then we actually see uh christopher robin with uh kanga rue Al and our favorite depressant, Eeyore. Um, let's see. Now, oh. <laughs> now, the interesting thing regarding Christopher Robin in this film is the fact that he had three voice actors, one for each of the shorts. You had Bruce Reitherman, uh, one of Wolfgang Reitherman's uh, sons, uh, for Winnie the Pooh and the Honey Tree. You had John um, Wormsley, for Winnie the Pooh and the Blastery Day and Timothy Turner. Timmy is an average kid that no one understands. Hey, no, no, Nickelodeon, no, not now, Nickelodeon, not the Timmy Turner from <laughs> Jelly Odd Parents. Get back to your corner, Nickelodeon. <laughs> yeah. Uh, say, uh, Timothy Turner for Winnie the Pooh and Tigger 2. Uh, we've got Eeyore voiced by. Ralph Wright, Kanga voiced by Barbara Luddy, an, another longtime uh, Disney collaborator. Uh, she was Lady in Lady mm -hmm. and the Tramp, Merryweather in Sleeping Beauty, Rover in 101 Dalmatians. Uh, she was also um, 
Mother Sexton, who was a church mouse, and uh, Mother Rabbit, both in Robin Hood. Uh, who else are we in? So who else are we introduced to here? Uh, Owl was voiced by Hal Smith. Uh, Chris, uh, yeah, so. And then you've got two voice actors for yeah. Rue. One is Clint Howard and the other is uh, Dory Whittaker. Uh, Christopher Robin, yeah. uh, just uh, gently nailing uh, Eeyore's tail back onto him. Uh, filled with sawdust, according to the narrator. Yeah, which is why his tail keeps falling out, apparently. Yeah. It's, um, um, you mentioned um, Hal, Hal Smith there. Um, Hal yes. Smith himself went, would go on to voice Winnie the Pooh a couple of times. Uh, yeah, he's, uh, he's, yeah, he was actually the voice of Winnie the Pooh in the fourth short that they made with That's uh, right. Winnie the Pooh and the Day for Eeyore. He, he was also in a, he was also in a, a TV short. Uh, he was also in a, sh a short educational film in 1981, Winnie the Pooh Discovers the Seasons. Um, He's, he's done a couple of other Disney projects as well. Uh, uncredited as... If I'm, uh, uncredited if I'm as, not mistaken... Yeah, oops, sorry, go ahead. If, if I'm not mistaken, I think he might have also voiced him in like this uh, strange live-action Winnie the Pooh PSA about not talking to strangers. Ah, okay. I, I'm pretty sure that was him, and I'm sure that that was the subject of the PSA. I know that it existed but i just um can't remember off the top of my head what exactly it was about i'm pretty sure it was about you know not talking to strangers and uh and i'm fairly certain that um winnie the pooh in that one uh, looked a lot taller than he does in the cartoons <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it was probably one of those big mascot suits that, that, that they were wearing yeah basically yeah yeah but uh, but say Hal Smith also uh, he's done a lot of stuff uh, for like voiceover work. Uh, he was uh, he was goofy as uh, Jacob Marley's ghost Ratty in the 1983 short Mickey's Christmas Carol. Uh, he was Philippe, the horse from uh, Beauty and the Beast, and he also did Mo in an American Tale. <laughs> yeah, and, and that's yeah. I think he's he's yeah, done, and that's not that's not um, the only uh, um, Don Bluth connection this movie has because one of the um, segments. Yes, he's one of the animators. Is animated by Don Bluth himself. Yeah, he's one mm -hmm. of the animators. And you can you can actually kind of you can kind of tell because the animation kind of I don't want, it doesn't speed up, but it it looks a little bit more fluid in some of the the actions. Yeah. Not that it not that it isn't fluid um, previously, but. Mm -hmm. More so, specifically with the way the characters move. Like, uh, um, well, I was going to mention a specific thing, but but we can um, uh, get to that when we get to it. Right now, though, we've yeah. got a, a tail to fix. Yes, of course. Yeah. Uh, but I, I say, in regards to Hal Smith, he's done a lot of Hanna Barbera stuff as well. He was in Huckleberry Hound. He was in the Flintstones, the Jetsons, uh, Famous Adventures of Mister Magoo. Uh, he, he was also one of the additional voices for the Pink Panther. He's done. He he was even in Scooby Doo and Hong Kong Fooey. <laughs> oh my word! He has been a busy bee. <laughs> I'll see myself out, folks. <laughs> oh, got funny bees and busy bees in this one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, absolutely fantastic. Uh, so, that, that that just shows. That just shows the extensive resume of uh, just some of these. I mean, yes, it was it was a small voice acting cast. It was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. There was only like there was only like fourteen. Uh, there was only like fourteen um, uh, voice actors throughout uh, throughout this film, but a lot of them have very extensive resumes, not just in the voice acting front, but just in, mm -hmm. in just media in general, film and TV, especially. But uh, the tail, the tail gets fixed. Uh, uh, Pooh uh, goes to meet Christopher Robin and he's, it's, it's, it's just the way he's walk, just the way he's walking around, just thinking, hmm, Maybe I could use this balloon to try and get the honey out of the tree. 
But uh, yeah, and, and I love I love when he asks um, Christopher Robin for the for the balloon, and Christopher Robin says, "What um, would you need it for?" And, and he says, "Honey." And 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 Chris Robin says, "But you don't get honey with a balloon." And Pooh says, "I do." And yeah, how exactly does that work? Well, for, well, simple reason: he can fly up to the. He can fly like a bee up to the honey tree, uh, but he ends up going into this this muddy patch, uh, just rolls himself rolls himself in the mud to make himself look like a little black rain cloud. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's, 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 you could you could just see you could just see the mud just dripping off him as he continues to cl- uh, continues uh, flying further up into the tree, and then <laughs> oh boy. Uh, you can never tell with bees. Uh, he he puts his hand. Can't tell with bees. He pu- he puts his hand in, unaware of the fact that the honey that he's managed to get out has some bees on it. Puts it in his mouth <laughs> and then just <laughs> pew 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 pew. <laughs> I mean that is. I mean that that is the sort of thing you would definitely expect uh, kids to be able to. Uh, pull off, I say, just make making the pew pew pew. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's just absolutely. <laughs> oh, let's say it is. It is one of the funniest moments of um, of not just this show, but of of the film in general. And it's, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> and then he and then he gets um, what we think's the last bee out of his uh, out of his mouth. He he just spits it out, and then just little little heel flick, ding, and then he. <laughs> And then the bee sounds like he's like a, a, a stuttering plane about to hit, hit the ground. Mayday, mayday, mayday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and, and he's he's like rolling around in in that mud that Pooh was in earlier. Tut tut, it looks like rain. And then and then that bee that we saw a moment ago, he he's had it. He's had enough. He just he just goes full kamikaze and then just. Uh, <laughs> Small inaccuracy, though he stings him with his head rather than the other end. I think, I think it, it, yeah, it's um, just a small inaccuracy. I think I might be wrong on that. But still, str- strong bee to be able to make Pooh go woof. You know, <laughs> and, like, and then he, and then he's just and then he gets stuck and then he gets stuck in the tree. The bees are surrounding him, and then that bee is just laughing his. Hysterically, he's like, "Yes, I got him! I got him!" And then you can actually see the camera shaking at this point. And then just the whole swarm <laughs> comes out. The balloon comes off its string, and Pooh's just like, "Wee wee 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 wee! Whoa whoa! He's going all over the place." <laughs> I always love um, uh, scenes like that when someone is clinging onto a deflating balloon. <laughs> I wonder if anybody's actually been able to. I wonder if anybody's actually tried to recreate that. Mind you, that would be somewhat problematic. You, uh, uh, you broke up a little bit there. I, I didn't quite catch ah, that. Right. I was like, I was, I'm, I'm sorry, what I was saying was, uh, I wonder if anybody's actually tried to recreate that. But then, in saying that, <laughs> though, it could be somewhat problematic. <laughs> yeah, I don't see that ending well. <laughs> no, no, I don't. I don't think anybody does. But uh, I say he. Uh, he he manages, uh, he manage, he actually manages to escape the bees because the bees end up going back into their hive. Uh, the last of the air g- g- goes out of the balloon, and oh bother! And he's just like, "Wee!" Christopher Robin catches I, him. I love, I love that brief moment where he um, sees the deflated balloon and he's still the end and says, "I think I shall come down." <laughs> and then. <laughs> And, okay, and then, then Chris and Robin catches him, and then you get a bugle charge from the bees, and they're just like, let's get him, boys! <laughs> oh, boy. Cavalry! <laughs> yeah, and it, and it is the actual bugle charge. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely brilliant. I mean, I mean, it's a cliche one to use, but it works. Yeah, it's, it's, it's still funny. <laughs> yeah, very, yeah. Uh, I was like, uh, uh, Christopher Robin and uh, Pooh, they they managed to they managed to escape the bees, uh, and then Pooh comes out again with you can never tell with bees, and then the last bee, I was like that the last bee that comes out of his mouth, yeah, that's the last bee. I mean, 
How did that be managed to stay inside him for so long? It must have just been nestled in the fluff or something. More than likely. <laughs> I, I've I've seen um I've seen loads of edits of um uh, that scene with the bees where as they're being chased they edit in um, Nicolas Cage from the remake of The Wicker Man going not the bees <laughs> <laughs> oh that that scene has been memed I mean it, it's oh, it's one of those cases because no, I mean, that scene I would have gone yeah no sorry go on. Because no, that that scene wasn't actually in the theatrical cut. It was in it was in the whole media no. release. And as soon as the whole mm. media release came out and people got wind of this scene, it became a meme overnight. Yeah, I would have gone with a different meme. I would have gone with um, uh, a quote from Batman from the comic book Amazon's Attack: "A deadly bee weapon, bees, my god." <laughs> Yeah, let's say, let's say, let's say that's pro- that's probably the best Co- Kevin Conroy impression we're gonna we're gonna hear all day, folks. Uh, was like, yep, sounds about say, right. <laughs> I say, yeah, yeah, because I say because Kevin Conroy was the voice of Batman in the animated series. That's right. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> but yeah, uh, Pooh uh, ends up uh, deciding to go to Rabbit's house for lunch. And uh, <laughs> yeah, say, a rabbit. And, and I like um, the the reason the yeah. reason why he likes um, rabbit. He says he likes rabbit because he uses small words like "how about lunch" <laughs> and "help yourself, poo." And as soon as he and as soon as rabbit hears that first that second statement, uh, rabbit voiced by the way by uh, Junius <laughs> Matthews, uh, who who is known mainly for being in. Uh, Winnie the Pooh, but was also the voice of Archimedes in The Sword and the Stone. Mm. He, he, he just was just really good at playing these, you know, uh, just, uh, you know, uh, oh my, 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 oh, <laughs> sort of characters. Yeah. But, um... that's, the best, that's the best way I could describe it. Oh my, my, my sort of characters. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then after that, we see, um, let's say, uh, Pooh ends up getting into Rabbit's house for lunch. Uh, condensed milk or honey, and I think we all know. I think we all know what uh, Pooh is going to choose here. I think but it's a case of uh, yeah. I say, with the way Rabbit's having his conversation with Pooh, it's like he knows what's about to happen. And and for, and for a first <laughs> time, for a first time, yeah, you you probably think to yourself, you probably think to yourself, yes, he's put, he probably knows what's going to happen, but. If anything, it actually gets the audience thinking, let's say for first time viewers, what is going to happen next? And then you just, yeah, just page after page after page of just poo eating so much honey. Oh, <laughs> boy. <laughs> and, and, and the way he speaks, and the way he speaks, like, I must be going now. <laughs> I, I think the narrator even says that he he says goodbye in a rather rather sticky, sticky voice. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. I, that's it. Ma- ma- he manages to clean off the rest of the honey off himself, and uh, yeah, tries to get out. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure we can fill in the blanks on this one, folks. <laughs> yeah, he ends up being stuck. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> And then Rabbit said, it comes from eating too much, to which Pooh responds, it comes from not having front, a front door that's big enough. Yeah, the thing is, Pooh, you're a bear. <laughs> He's a rabbit. I think, I think you need two, I think you definitely yeah. need two completely different <laughs> sized uh, front doors for that. <laughs> and then... <laughs> uh, yes, indeed. Yeah. But uh, we... Uh, and then, and then he's he's just he's just waiting there for a while. Christopher Robin comes along, and then it's just a case of, ah, uh, right, okay, right. We've tried pulling him out. We could try pushing him back in, but uh, in the end, they decide oh, let's just wait until he starts to thin out. <laughs> and, the, and and Pooh's just like, how long is that going to take? And then your his response just, yep. Oh Days, boy. Weeks, months, months who knows? knows. And yeah. Again, lockdown, lockdown vibes. vibes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we were you see, we were just wondering how long this lockdown was actually gonna last. But uh, but like I say, I'll say, I'll say, I'll say with everything that was announced in regard 
with everything that was announced as far as the um uh as, as far as the um further easing of restrictions is this concerned um uh, a couple of the things let's say the cinema's reopening uh, being able to visit other people uh, inside their homes um there are a lot of other things opening up uh and another big thing um being able uh, being able to have uh fans at um sporting events and uh, concerts and mm. all going to plan full capacity before the end of the year which means i will be able to see jls at the hydro at, f- at a sellout crowd uh yeah yes i'm a jls fan folks uh, one of my younger sisters got me tickets to see uh, JLS February last year. Uh, and we were meant to see them at around about Christmas time, but uh, then it got pushed back to the summer and then it pushed back even further to October, which is around about her birthday as well. And, uh, and I gave her explicit instructions to make sure she keeps her birthday money aside for the merchandise. And don't worry, folks, I'll be saving up money on my end for merchandise for myself as well. But uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, we we get introduced to Gopher at this point. Yeah. Well, oh boy. yeah. Uh, How would you and then the first thing, and the first thing he says, um, uh, um, I'm not in the book, but I'm at your service. Well, that's uh, <laughs> that's true both in both in and out of universe, since he's a character <laughs> created specifically for this um, yeah. for these shorts. Yeah, he was actually going to replace Piglet. In in the mm. in the shorts, but uh, but Piglet ended up uh, being kept in and was introduced in Winnie the Pooh and the Blast Blue Day, which we're going to get into uh, uh, shortly. I say I say go for mm. just what I oh boy, uh, we end up with. Uh, no, I'm, I'm just th- I'm just thinking. Yeah, I'm just thinking about the recent um, uh, the the Winnie the Pooh movies after this and the recent uh, ones. I don't think um, he's ever appeared in much else other than this. That's a valid point. Now you mention it. I remember. I distinctly remember he was in um, uh, one of the first animated TV shows, The New Adventures of Winnie the Pooh. But other than that, I don't think I don't think he's been used again. Yeah. Uh, let's let's see what it. Let's That's see where very he... strange. Now that I think about it. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so he does have a couple of traits that are similar to the beaver that was in Lady in the Tramp. I say, for there, I can't do yeah, that. The, I can't do that whistling. What you call it? Yeah, um, that that whistling impediment. Yeah, I say, uh, Lady in the Tramp. Uh, welcome to Pooh Corner. New Adventures of Winnie the Pooh. You've mentioned. Um, Winnie the Pooh Thanksgiving, Valentine for you, very merry Pooh year. How- he was also in the House of Mouse. Oh, and he was in Kingdom Hearts. Golfer was in Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> ah, well then. Wow. Okay. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> uh, I was like, I, was like, I mean, I've, I've honestly lost count, folks, of uh, how many of these films have been featured in a Kingdom Hearts game in some form. Yeah, in some capacity. Yeah. That's like, that's like, cause, that's like, cause the Winnie the Pooh world, the Hundred Acre Wood is just, that's like, it's, it's just a place, it's, it's a place to effectively just uh, take a break from like the main story and just play some mini games with your favorite Winnie the Pooh characters. Yeah. And why not? Yeah. That's like, uh, that's like, we, we get a running gag throughout uh, this and uh, the blustery day as well, where uh, say like, he's just, he's, He's just walking along, minding his own business, and then he says, Whoa! Falls down his hole. <laughs> no, they, I said, I said, I said that, that, that's, that's one of a couple of running gags that we have throughout this film as well. Mm. Oh, boy. It's, uh, it's like, uh, charge seven sticks of dynamite. I was like, no, the, the cost in money. <laughs> no charge account. I I work strictly in cash. <laughs> oh, which yeah. which makes me wonder what what is the monetary system in the hundred acre, acre wood? wood? Yeah, what would the monetary system be? <laughs> oh boy, but uh, yeah, it is nothing. Apparently, uh, Gopher was um, uh, 
added because um, uh, these shorts were based on such an English um, property of the Winnie the Pooh books. So figured, well, let's add just a little bit of an Americanism in there. Yeah. Yeah. Just to make it a bit more, not, not, not necessarily appealing, but something more instantly recognizable to, per- to American, American audience, audiences, yeah. perhaps. Yeah, because yeah, because the, uh, so, which, cause the which, which makes yeah, make, yeah which, makes sense. Fair yeah, makes sense. Yeah, because the um, because the because the and, and Pooh, that's why they were that's why they started out as as uh, as yeah as because like, the Winnie the Pooh books they they were it's, it's like it's uh, British literature as well. Mm. So to be able to say to be to be able to get such to be able to get such an iconic character in British literature and to be able to turn it into this big multimedia franchise that we have today as i say, I say no, no mean feat for disney because because this was actually yeah. the because this was technically because it was released as, because they were released as shorts initially before they became a full-length film uh this was technically disney himself it was his last film that he was involved with before he uh, yes. before he passed away yes and they were done as shorts because disney thought that would be the better way of introducing American audiences to these characters before doing a, f- a full movie. Yeah, and and it and it worked because because like I said, because like Definitely. I said, because like I said earlier, the uh, I'll say I'll say wide wide critical acclaim for the Honey Tree, uh, mm-hmm. Mastery Day, one step better, winning the Oscar for best animated short, and then and then when the third short was released, Winnie the Pooh and Tigger two, household name around the world, and then. And Absolutely, then that, and then that vision of Pooh becoming, uh, having a full-length film, combining these three shorts together, became a reality in 1977. Mm-hmm. But uh, but um, uh, let's say it's just a case of Gopher's just like, yeah, probably best to probably best to wait, but. Uh, he he still he still has that idea of uh, using using dynamite to uh, just to just blow <laughs> Winnie the Pooh out of there, and and I'm just like, uh, that's a little concerning. Yeah, tiny tiny bit extreme. Yeah, and all because <laughs> Al said, "Oh, blast it all." <laughs> Good idea with some dynamite. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. But uh, but at the end of, at the end of the day, um, the, at the end of the day, they just they just keep waiting. As they, and there's even one page in particular where you have Chris Robin with, uh, in his raincoat. He has an umbrella keeping Winnie the Pooh dry. Oh, I mean, God bless him. And then yeah. and, and he, ha- he has this little uh, headscarf to somewhat keep him warm uh, d- during the night. Uh, mm. so like breakfast, lunch, pop. Lunchbox comes up and then Golfer makes another appearance. Uh, so he has uh, summer squash, uh, salmon, whatever it was, summer squash, shuck, shuck attach, and honey custard. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, and yes, yeah, so, yeah, rabbit's reaction is just priceless. So, so, everything, from, everything from the ears twisting the wide eyes. Oh, so, yeah. so, I, th- I think it's the whiskers that shake. I might be wrong on that one. Because he's just like, well, I think like, you're right. I say back, back and forth, and then <laughs> falls over his chair. Oh boy! Uh, <laughs> a small smack roll of honey, and, th- and then rabbit's just like, he's just like, nope, you're not getting this honey. And then conveniently somehow has a sign that he. Mu- I was like, I was like. I don't know how he managed to get that sign done so quickly, but I think I think that must have just been conveniently there for plot purposes. But let's not detract from that. Well, think- maybe, maybe Rabbit, maybe Rabbit figured something like this would happen, or maybe he's just a, a very quick writer. Maybe he is. That is, maybe he is. And he actually hammers the sign in with his fist. This how this is how serious this situation is. Yeah, see, he's just like, screw, he's just like, bear. forget the hammer, I'm going to use my fist. Don't feed the bear. <laughs> and then, and then Goldfish is like, right, okay, that's it. And again, just, and again, not watching where he's going. Whoa! <laughs> Thus demonstrating the value of watching where you're going, folks. 
absolutely yeah and and then we and then we transitioned uh, then we transition what i would assume would be a few days later one morning this let's say rabbit it's just woken up uh it's uh bear with me yeah uh, he wakes up one morning and he he decides he's he has his hand on poo he decides to go for a little push and then and he just get a little e and he pushes and he's like yes he's moving he's moving he's moving and then and then we get and then we get the next song mind over matter and uh and um uh and this and this and this is and this is the part where I bring up my fun notes. <laughs> it's a case of uh, <laughs> yeah. I say it's a case. Uh, I say when that song starts and cue the military band and the, and the yeah. and the music is effectively a military band in the back in the background of the song. And and it it works. It works. I would say the Sherman Brothers did a fantastic job with. Uh, w- with all the songs and you and the uh, the composer as well uh, yeah uh, buddy baker did uh, the score for the film i say the, the three of them working together to create to create this i say it works brilliantly and it really um, does i say uh, rude des- rude decides to join in to try and help uh, cuz uh, i say christopher robin tried to pull poo um, I say no, it won't be rabbit. Uh, it's it's uh, Eeyore, isn't it? Trying to pull Christopher uh, Robin e- and e- Rue trying to pull Eeyore by his tail. By his tail, yeah. Oh, e- Eeyore's trying. Eeyore, I say Eeyore's trying to yeah, trying to pull either Christopher Robin or his drum. I think it, it might be the drum. I might be wrong on that one. Um, I say, and then uh, I think it's uh, I think it's Chris Robin holding um, poo. poo. Yes, Eeyore bites. Biting onto um, the bottom of uh, Chris Robin's Robin shirt, shirt and, yeah, and pulling with then, that, Rue then pulling Rue on holding onto the tail, the tail, and then and then go and then and then Gopher pops up again, and then he and then he <laughs> decides and then he decides to help out as he pulling Rue, who's who's effectively trying to hold on to the tail with one hand, and then and then. Tail comes off and Gopher falls down the hole again. <laughs> I mean, I mean, that's gotta be like what the third or fourth time that he's fallen down that hole today. Third, I believe. Guy has just got no luck. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, yeah, because he fell down the hole after the no charge account. Uh, mm-hmm. Then fell fell down after. Uh... Uh, Rabbit after the whole took lunch his fi- honey pot. The, the lunch fiasco, and then yeah. yeah, yeah, it would be the third time. Yeah. And then, and then, and then, and then you can you you actually hear you actually hear uh, the cast just that uh, they're singing high and higher the heave hoes and the music building as well at that point, and then and then we get it's to the exciting cre- like- yeah and, and then we get to the crescendo and then Rabbit is just like right let's give this a little run up and then boom and and Pooh just goes yay. <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy, he just goes yeet and Gopher's just like, wait a minute, Pooh's gonna go straight out of the book, quick, turn the page! And then... And I love that, the page flick as he... <laughs> I mean, I mean, I honestly cannot fault the page transitions for moments like that. No. No. And, it's, it's brilliant. It's all absolutely brilliant. Yeah. And how convenient that he ends up being stuck again this time in a tree that had i can only assume that swarm of bees from earlier yeah i guess so stuck st- stuck in the honey tree which i would assume would be the honey tree from earlier yeah th- uh, that would make sense to you yeah. know bookend everything hey <laughs> i didn't even mean to do that <laughs> <laughs> and and those are the, and those are the sort of and those are the sort of jokes that work. The jokes that just come out of nowhere. Accidental ones. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but um, that's it. That's, and Chris Roberts is like, yeah, don't worry, Pooh, we'll get you out. But Pooh's just like, yeah, no, don't mind, don't mind me. Take your time. I'm more than happy with all this glorious honey. <laughs> oh. I think um, there's a line. 
I think there's a line in the original book where he's um, stuck head first in the honey tree and just slurping it all up. I think the line says something like, um, uh, for Pooh, this was the happiest ending. And I'm like, yeah, I, I agree. <laughs> oh, boy. But, uh, but yeah, and, and that brings us to the end of that short, uh, The Honey Tree. But then, and then we transition into, <clears throat> and then a great way of actually linking all three of the shorts together here, which, which didn't happen when they were, the shorts were released individually, because it was a because it was a case of um, at the end of the Honey Tree short, because um, because the shorts were released uh, individually on VHS as well. Um, <clears throat> as I because because uh, as soon as Pooh finished his time for something sweet, book closes and that's it, end of that story. But um, but the narrator comes in and um, and links the end of the Honey Tree into the beginning of. Uh, the blustery day, which out of the three here, this is probably my favorite short of the three. Uh, I'll say, and and I mean, and, and I'm I'm not just saying that just because it was a uh, it was it was an Oscar winner, folks. I'm not I'm not just saying that. Yes, but, but uh, I'll say, I'll say, you you've got to have like legitimate reasons from your opinion. To justify yeah. why why it's your favorite as well, instead of just uh -huh. listing off all the accolades and all that. But was that yeah? Uh, but yeah, um, let's say, let's say the the first song in this blustery day short. Uh, I say it's it's a very very um, windy day, uh, and then you get I say you've got Pooh singing his. Uh, his little humdiddy dum, and it's uh, it looks like a rather blustery day today. Uh, he's actually going to his thoughtful spot at this point, um, and mm. then and then and then Golfer makes another, uh, and then Golfer pops up again. He's just like, uh, he's like, Pooh, what are you doing here? Uh, Pooh is just saying, yeah, he's he's just he's just thinking. Uh, what are you thinking about? Oh, oh bother! You made me forget. And uh, a, 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 br <laughs> a brilliant pun here, folks, uh, because it's Wind's Day. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Wednesday. Like, inst instead of it being Wednesday. Now that that could be clever if I managed to actually upload this on a Wednesday. Ah, oh, that would that, <laughs> that would be clever. <laughs> I, say, I, say, I, 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 need to, I need to get the other ones recorded first, folks. So <laughs> bear with yes. me on that one. <laughs> but, yeah. And one of um, the only uh, scenes with Gopher in the movie where he doesn't then immediately fall down the hole again. Yeah, so he, he actually manages to climb back down the hole. <laughs> yeah, <we're>, yes, <laughs> and, I'm um, going down here on my own terms. <laughs> yeah, uh, yes, I'm. I'm watching where I'm going. I'm not going to. Uh, I'm not going to fall down. I'm not going to get you to down. <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, he is uh, a, a happy winds day, according to Pooh, and he goes and he goes to see Piglet for the first time, voiced by John Fiedler. Hence, there we go. <laughs> it was just a case. It was just a case. That I just. I just so I just typed in "hundred acre wood background." This was one of the first ones that came up, and I thought this one works because it's the same animation style that was used for this film. And uh, there we go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. He's voiced by uh, John Fiedler, uh, who is uh, also let's say he's, he's he's done a lot of stuff as well. A, a lot of it mainly Winnie the Pooh stuff. Uh, he was also the um, he was also a character in the. Uh, the Emperor's New Groove, interestingly. Yes, so I... He, he, was that, he was the old man that uh, Cusco bumped into. You threw off my groove! Yes. <laughs> Beware the groove! <laughs> yeah. Uh, he, he was also Father Sexton in, um, in Robin Hood as well. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I say, he... I say, I say just he's, he's another one of those he's another one of those um cat um I say he was he's also another one of those um cast members from this film that has a very extensive uh, resume mm -hmm. and and 
and, and it's safe to say you can definitely tell that they went for a lot of care uh, when it came to uh, selecting the uh, the cast members for uh, for these uh, for these uh, shorts because because uh, at the end of the day um, I mean you've got your longtime Disney collaborators at the time and you've also got other you've also got other um, uh, act, actors and actresses that have extensive resumes uh, to their name. John Fiedler, uh, I say John Fiedler, like I said, uh, one of his very first roles was one of the jurors in the 19, 1950s uh, film of 12 Angry Men with Henry Fonda in it. And uh, I say a uh, little, little thing regarding uh, Twelve Angry Men, folks. Uh, I said when I when I did um, uh, when I did theatre acting at uh, college after I left school. That was oh my ten years ago. I feel old. <laughs> well, I say technically I'm twenty six because I had two lockdown birthdays. So those lockdown birthdays don't count. Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah. So I say technically I'm still twenty six. So. I'll live with that for now. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I, mean, I mean, screw the laws of nature. I live by my rules. <laughs> yes. Time is relative. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, um, so there, there was a monologue from uh, 12 Angry Men that I actually uh, acted out uh, as part of the, um, uh, the voice portion of the, uh, uh, the theater acting where uh, the, the, voice, uh, the voice module uh, required me to do uh, two monologues, uh, one from a contemporary play and one from a, a classic play. Um, mm. The the classic play that I chose was uh, Merchant of Venice, and nice. uh, I, I mean, I mean, as far as class as far as uh, classic playwrights go, I mean, the first one you go to Shakespeare without a doubt. But the um, yeah, you can't usually go wrong. Yeah, uh, you've also I say I say no Bill Shakey. Yeah, I see the contemporary one I went for was uh, 12 Angry Men. And I, I, there was even a couple of points where I actually act, acted that monologue out with some of my fellow acting students at the time. And if anything, acting it out with my fellow, those, um, uh, my fellow students, uh, as if we were actually doing that scene on stage, it, uh, it actually helped me do that monologue even better than I normally did. Yes, I always find it's usually better when you have um, uh, someone to bounce off of. That's why um, yeah. I'm always so thrilled whenever I hear of um, uh, cartoons or other animated projects where they actually get all the actors together, or at least some yeah. of them together in the same booths, or maybe, you know, not the same booths, but in the same uh, recording studio to same do their studio, lines yeah. together. And you, it, it really does make the difference because you've got, you know, you can do um other takes where they say all right um uh you try this i'll try that and mm -hmm. you know and you get better reactions from from everyone yeah and i say and i see that i see that and that, and that and that really does and that really does and if anything that does work in the uh, in their favor being able to get um a, a better dynamic of that scene uh the particular scene that they're doing the voiceover yes. for Yes. Yeah. So yeah, uh, that out of the way, uh, we've got uh, uh, we're introduced to uh, Piglet, uh, voiced by John Field. Um, Happy Wednesday, Piglet to um, uh, to Piglet from uh, Pooh. The wind's starting to pick up. Uh, Pooh tries to uh, grab hold of Piglet's scarf, but oh no, the the scarf starts unraveling. <laughs> but, uh, but Piglet does luckily manage to hold on to the end of that um to the last strand holding off a deer life. <laughs> yeah. All all while you hear the music from Little Black Rain Cloud from the Honey Tree short in the background. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, everyone's get everyone's getting a chance to fly in this one. <laughs> yeah, and then and then Moose just like, hey, look at this! It's a kite. And then and then cast and then Kanga's <laughs> just and then Kanga's just like, uh, oh right, uh, that's not a kite, Rue, That's actually Piglet. And then you've still got Pooh just like, happy go lucky, happy Wednesday to both of them. Uh, and then and then it, and then it just start it 
the chaos starts to build at this point, folks. Eeyore manages to build his house of sticks. Uh, Piglet's almost heading to the ground. And, oh dear. And then just boom. Bowling ball strike from uh, uh, from Pooh. Happy Wednesday, Eeyore. Thanks for noticing. <laughs> yeah. Poor and, Eeyore. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, and then Rabbit is just... Uh, I think you, you can see some of the things. I think, uh, I think cabbage is misspelt. Carrots are misspelt. Uh, mm-hmm. I, mean, I, I believe it's spelled K E R I T S. Yes, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then, and then, the, with where Pooh is positioned, he's like on the line. He's, he's on the like the crop line of where the carrots are. Uh, Happy Wednesday, Rabbit. And Rabbit's just like, oh no, no, not the carrots, not the carrots, no. Like, he's, he's, he's having to try and catch up with the um, uh, with Pooh, and that it is. Oh, I, lo- I love that particular part. It's like, it's, like he's, it's, it's like Pooh is water skiing. Yeah. <laughs> it's like water skiing, getting the carrots up. And if anything, it's actually helping Rabbit. Because Rabbit is yeah. just... He, he, Rabbit. he even says, oh no, oh no, oh yes. Oh yes. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and I then, love how you... you yeah, you have the you carrots. that shot of the pile of carrots, and then just just the last plop of the one on the top. I love that shot. Yeah, and and you've got and you've got the carrot sign on the top of it as well. <laughs> Absolutely, that just makes it brilliant. perfect. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, they get to Owl's house, um, as an, and and Owl's just in his rocking chair, uh, s- sleeping. Uh, but my word, uh, my word. Say, you, you see the tree rocking back and forth, and you're just thinking, this ain't gonna last long. Well, not much longer, <laughs> anyway. But, uh, yeah, um, Piglet just boom, face plants into the window, poo follows suit. Uh, Owl's just like, yeah, you two can come in, opens the window, wee! <laughs> <laughs> oh dear! Luckily, there are two two comfy chairs placed there, where they just sink into. Yeah, just just say just just just, just, just brilliantly, <laughs> just perfectly. Oh perfect. yes! Happy Wednesday, Eeyore. Yes. Let's say tree continued. Tree still rocking at this point, folks. Uh, uh, table. <laughs> let's say table starts sliding towards them. You've got the tea for Piglet, and then the honey pods for Owl. Uh, for, for Pooh. I mean, I mean. It, and I'm. I can only assume that all the houses that uh, that everybody has, they have at least a pot of honey for poo on the off yeah. chance he's coming in, along. In the Hundred Acre Woods, it's it's just one of those things that everyone just seems to have in the Hundred Acre Woods. You know, yeah. every house has a carton of milk, and every exactly. um, home in the Hundred Acre Woods has a pot of honey. It's just an everyday need. Either that or everyone anticipates that they're going to be getting a visit from Winnie the Pooh at some point. So, you know, you need to be prepared. Yeah. And yeah. I think, I think I've, I've, just, I've just looked this up just now, folks. Uh, yeah, there is an actual somewhat hundred acre wood somewhere. It's actually in East Sussex. Uh, it's Ashton Forest mm-hmm. to be exact, but that's actually 500 acres. <laughs> wow a a Milne rounded it down a little bit <laughs> yeah but still we we do effectively have an actual hundred acre wood we can go to mm-hmm I mean, I'm sure there's been I'm sure there's been many a pot of honey enjoyed there <laughs> that wouldn't surprise me I mean I mean fail, failing that people will people will bring up bring along one of their one of their honey jars. Yes. Failing that. But yeah, um, let's see. How's about that, folks? There is an actual 100 acre wood in the UK, <laughs> albeit five times larger than the ones in the film, but that's beside the point. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, that's it. And then, and then he's, uh, and then Owl ends up uh, going on about his, um, uh, his family, and he just drones on and on and 
on about them, which is another running gag throughout the entire series. He, <laughs> he, he always he always has a family member to talk about, and some of the words he comes out with. I mean, can anybody understand some of the vocabulary he's coming out with? <laughs> I, I I kind of can, but sometimes <laughs> I'm like, you're not using that word correctly. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, cue the grammar Nazis, folks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, listen, he then talks I love, about... I love them late, later on when he tells of... I love later on when he talks of his, his uncle who became enamored of a pussycat and went to sea with <laughs> her in a pea green pea boat. Green. Yes, that, yeah, that nursery rhyme. My goodness me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but um, let's see, let's see, he talks about, he talks about somebody... Uh, I, th I think it was a his aunt, his aunt Clara in the in the Royal Opera or, or something uh, like that. London Opera, yeah. Uh, the Big Wind of sixty seven. That's was the one. Seven, the Big Wind of sixty seven, or was it seventy six? How old is Owl? Because if it's sixty seven or seventy six, I can only assume he's talking about eighteen sixty seven or eighteen seventy six. Yeah, <laughs> because because when the short was released, the short was released in nineteen sixty seven. So they so they could so it couldn't be 1976. So it has to no. be 1877 or 1876 or 1867. I, it has unless to be. both unless both of those numbers were just made up on the spot by Owl. <laughs> he seems to me the kind of person who would, you know, just invent fascinating stories just so he'll have something to say. Oh, that well, is... I, well, fascinating, you know. Well, Th th there is that as well, yeah. Th there is that to take into account. But um, let's say he, um, let's say while, while he's telling that story, unaware of what's going on behind him, the tree is still rocking at this point, folks. Uh, you see th all the plates and crockery and all that. You see all that start to fall off the shelves, and then it gets, and then you just, and then you just, you just reach that tipping point. And he's just like, whoa! And then, the, and you're just like, timber! And boom, <laughs> his house is destroyed. <laughs> oh, and I love what he, what, he has to, what he has to say when he looks out the window. Pooh, did you do that? <laughs> <laughs> and Pooh's just like, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, but, but, uh, but I mean, the sad part about it is, the fact that th this ain't gonna get fixed. It ain't gonna get fixed. There's there's no sugar coating no. it. He needs to get a new house. And uh, but, I say Eeyore, he decides, you know what? I'm gonna go and see if I can find what I'm gonna go and see if I can find an, uh, a house for him. And then this is where that owl and the pussycat story comes um uh, is briefly mentioned. And um, I say I'm trying to remember what page numbers it is. I say talked all the way from page. 41, I think it is. 41 yeah, to 62. Like yeah. Uh, yeah, that, sound, that sounds right. Yeah. Yeah. Th see, that's, so see, that's sort of the extent of how long owl stories can go on for. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, luckily, the narrator was able to like condense that down to just like a few seconds for how long that story went on for. <laughs> but uh, yeah, he. Um, as a bluster of a day becomes a blustery night. Uh, and Pooh is just lying there in his bed. He's hearing all these strange noises, including a little brrr, <clears throat> brrr. And he's just like, okay, what is going on here? What is going on here? <laughs> and he's just like, uh, is that you, Piglet, Eeyore, Christopher Robin? And then you see the door starting to shake. And he's like, he's like trying to come in. Uh, and then Pooh, mm. with it, with his little toy, with his little toy gun with little his, cork, his pop, his pop gun. Yes, that's the one. <laughs> uh, decides to take the um, decides to take the lock off. Well, let's say it's let's say it, it, it's a lock to me, folks. I, I I don't know what the proper word for it is. Yeah, like um, when those slide down Lats. wooden bar. Yeah things yeah I, was like, I, was like, I don't know what the proper word for it is uh, so somebody might be able to let somebody might be able to let us know in the comments but yeah uh yeah probably <laughs> but oh boy uh 
hello out there. Uh, hope he hopes nobody answers. Surprise! In comes the wonderful Tigger, voiced by ah. Paul Winchell. Now, say Paul Winchell wasn't yes. actually the first choice for yeah uh, uh, for uh, yeah. Yeah. He's, he's going to be voiced by um, Wally Boag, I believe his yes. name is, who is um, best known for the live Disney show, The Golden Horseshoe Review. But um, apparently he, he did um, record lines for it as well, but yeah. they did a somebody deemed the it, performance yeah. as too... Yeah, and it, the performance was deemed too zany, which makes me very curious as to what exactly it sounded like, because... Paul Winchell as Tigger is, is pretty zany. He, so he, he, he is very I, excitable, yeah. So, so how's how zany is how zany is too zany? You know? Yeah. It's one it's one of those things that I would be very fascinated to hear. Like like um uh the original recordings of Tim Curry as the Joker on Batman the Animated Series. Like all wow. of these Oh, did you not know about that? Tim Curry was gonna be the Joker instead of Mark Hamill? Wow. Yeah, he was um, the first choice and he recorded um, the first three or four episodes, uh -huh. but he um, he had uh, bronchitis at the time, which uh, was not made ideal. even worse by the made even made even worse by the fact that he's a heavy smoker. So it, mm. uh, you know, I guess um, affected his performance. And one of the producers, I suspect who, but I, I I don't want to say in case, you know, like saying bad mouthing anything. But when the producers um, said, yeah, I, I don't like this. We got to um, uh, replace him. Um, yeah. And then they and, ended up with Mark Hamill. Yep. And Mark Hamill is the definitive Joker voice. But I always, I've always hoped that someday they would release those recordings. Or better yet, take those recordings and reincorporate them into some animated film set in the multiverse, you know? retroactively make Tim Curry a legit Joker. Hmm. Hopefully, hopefully Warner Brothers get onto that at some point. <clears throat> mm. yeah. there, there is only one um, small snippet of it that was featured in one of the episodes. I think it was uh, um, Be a Clown, where uh, um, uh, the mayor's son uh, runs away from home and ends mm -hmm. up um, like... Uh, at the Joker's lair or something. Well, one of um, the uh, robot clowns at the amusement park uses what many people assume to be Tim Curry's Joker laugh. Ah, okay. That is interesting. <clears throat> Very interesting. Yeah. And <clears throat> oh boy, but 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 back to ticket folks. It's a voice by Paul Winchell. Yes. He's done a couple yeah, of others. And there's another, there's a thing I yeah. um, always remember about Paul Winchell, because mm -hmm. again, um, he, Tigger's another one who's now voiced by uh, Jim Cummings, Jim Cummings. but, but um, when uh, Jim Cummings officially took over for Sterling Holloway on the new adventures of Winnie the Pooh, Paul Winchell was still around doing the Tigger voice. Um, yeah. But every sure now was. and then, but every, but every now and then um, Jim Cummings would do an episode whenever Paul Winchell was unavailable for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. But when um, Paul Winchell officially retired, he went up to Jim Cummings and said, all right, you're, you're a Tigger now, so take care of my little buddy. Oh, bless him. Yeah. Yeah. So they, um, so they, and uh, people are probably wondering how Paul Winchell managed to do Tigger's voice. Mm. Well, he actually got the voice. He actually did the voice where... Uh, he was, uh, he did a show, uh, he did uh, something called Stop, Look and Laugh, where he, he had a ventriloquist dummy and he used the voice that he used for that dummy as the voice of Tigger. So, that, so there we go, folks. Then... <clears throat> a, far, a far cry from when Paul Winchell would eventually voice Dick Dastardly. Yes, he has. Yeah, just I say he. Yeah, he's got a good range. Yeah, he. Yeah, he did dig dastardly in Wacky Races and the spin-off of Wacky Races, dastardly and Muttley in their flying machines. Stop that pigeon! Was it Muttley? Uh, <laughs> 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 
<laughs> That's my best Motley laugh, folks. Bear with me on that one. <laughs> That's real. That was really good. Yeah, uh, but uh, what are you uh, snickering at, Motley? <laughs> Oh my word! <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, this isn't the only um, Disney project that uh, Paul Winchell was involved with. He was also a uh, Shun Gon, uh, who I would assume is the Chinese cat from the Aristocats. Yeah, and nowadays that's a bit. It's it's his Shanghai Hong Kong egg foo young fortune cookie always wrong. That's oh, it's always that line. It's just like. Yeah, that has not. Aged. That is, yeah, that hasn't aged well at all. And you, no, but uh, he he was boom. I say he would also voice Boomer in uh, the Fox and the Hound, which yeah. John which John Fiedler was also in as the uh, the porcupine. There's a, a, he's um, a non-Disney thing he also did. He mm-hmm. was in the um, uh, animated short version of Dr. Seuss's Green Eggs and Ham. Um, oh, but would... there's one bit where he, there's one bit at the end where he does the Tigger laugh and it's like, ah. Uh... <laughs> oh yeah, 19, yeah, back in 1973, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's about that. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. I said, uh, I said there, there was actually there was actually some sort of a bet I think involving Doctor Seuss that he there was uh, he can't use any more than X amount of words to write a children's book, and then that's when Green Eggs and Ham came about. And uh, yeah, I say those that made the bet with Seuss are probably thinking we look really stupid now for making this bet. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but uh, I think I think Green Eggs and Ham is one of the best Doctor Seuss books. Um, I say, uh, on, on top of the likes, oh, yeah. of, on top of the likes of the Grinch, the Cat in the Hat, uh, film adaptations, mm-hmm. Cat in the Hat, very questionable. Grinch, I enjoy, but well, the Jim Carrey Grinch, of course, folks. Uh, not so keen on the animated. Uh, I'm I'm more I'm more of an old I'm more of an old school guy. I prefer oh, yeah. the animated Grinch with oh, Boris yeah. oh, Karloff. That- Oh yeah, the, the the old the old school. You're a mean one, Mr. Grinch. Song, yeah, yes, yeah, that that one, folks. Yeah, yeah, but uh, let's say, but uh, it's 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 been a while since I've been able to. It's been able. It's been a while since I've been able to use uh, this little gag, folks. And it's uh, and it's probably the only time I'm actually going to be able to. It's probably going to be one of the only times I'm able to get away with actually using the footage with uh, with all the. Um, the sound and music in the background. It's probably the only time I'm going to be able to get away with it. Uh, Tigger has a great introduction. He has a great introduction for himself in, in song, song form. form. Cue the music, Tigger. Well, <laughs> he asked for it. Ooh, the wonderful thing about Tiggers is Tiggers are wonderful things. Their tops are made of the rubber, their bottoms are made of the strings. They're bouncy, trouncy, flouncy, pouncy, fun, 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 fun. But the most wonderful thing about Tiggers is I'm the only one. I'm the only one. Yeah. <laughs> oh. I was like, I've lost count of how many times I've actually... Ax- I've lost count of how many times I've managed to get through that song, but it's always the bouncy, flouncy, trouncy, pouncy part. I, I, I always seem to get those the wrong way round. <laughs> I'm sure Tigger wouldn't mind. Yeah, but uh, but I say, I say it's not the it's bouncy, trouncy, o- and pouncy. <laughs> but I say, but it's I say, like I say, it's not the only time we would hear that song throughout this uh, film. It's the f- I say it's the first time we hear it in the film, but it won't be the last. But then he sees his reflection <laughs> in the mirror, and it is comedy gold here. Uh, <gasps> I say the the preposterous chin, the the striped pajamas, <laughs> the ricky ricky decorous striped pajamas. As then Bruce is like, uh, it looks like it looks like another Tigger to me. No, it's not. I'm the only Tigger. And then somehow ends up being scared by his own reflection, and then just yeets under the table. <laughs> uh, like I say, and, and that I is... It, 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 is is he is he gone? All, All except, except for the, the tail. tail. Yeet! He's gone. <laughs> and, and, like I say, and I love the I love the sound of the I love the. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, that's like I said, it's just absolute comedy gold, just that little bit there. Absolute comedy gold. You see, and, and it's and it and it seems like that on top of um on top of everything else that we've talked about in this short alone, that uh, that it's why this is my favorite short of the three in this film. Yeah, no, I I I I'd agree with that. <laughs> yeah. And then we get introduced to another somewhat running gag throughout the um throughout the franchise where uh where Tigger he he goes for the honey, he's like, that's what Tigger's like best. Has a little taste of it, and just like yuck, Tigger's don't like honey. Tiggers do not like honey. Yeah. That icky sticky stuff is only good for heffalumps and woozles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I was like, I said, like, say that I say the, the tiggers don't like honey. Like, I say that would become a running gag throughout the um uh th- throughout the rest of the throughout the rest of the franchise. Yeah, the, the- <laughs> There's one line I always I always remember, and I don't know why this sticks out, but mm-hmm. I always remember the line from the Tigger movie when um, mm-hmm. Tigger gets his foot stuck in the honey pot and he gets down and he says, what do these poo bears like about this icky, sticky stuff anyway? <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, bless him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, 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 talk, so he talks a little bit about the uh, heffalumps and woozles and Pooh's just like, uh, okay, what do they do? <laughs> no, nah, no, nah, they don't do much. They just steal honey. And Pooh, and then, and then you just, you, Pooh's just, Pooh effectively, he's like, he's like that, that uh, Metal Gear Solid exclamation mark. Like, uh, <laughs> just like, what? Your honey? <laughs> no, not my honey. <laughs> this is serious. Yeah, this is my honey and no one's taking it from me. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, and then he and then Tigger ends up singing the wonderful thing about Tiggers again, and then Pooh goes into like hyper defense mode, uh, <laughs> and, then, and then and then you hear that Winnie the Pooh theme motif. The do 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 do. You, you hear that little motif when he's when he just goes into his military defense mode, and then. And then he uh, and then he hits a point where he ends up uh, falling asleep, starts to dream, and then we get the Heffalumps and Woozles song, which has some very concern, uh, very interesting similarities to the infamous Pink Elephants on Parade from Dumbo, including yeah, it's very similar. Yeah. so much so I, I I struggle to decide which one is more trippy. Yeah, I, I, I for me. I'm still gonna stick with the original, uh, the pink, the original pink elephant scene because that one's just like way more disturbing. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah. See, so, so they they actually recycle one of the uh, the dance sequences from Dumbo uh, yes. in this scene. And yeah, I I love that looking out for little shots of um, recycled, recycled animation. animation and thing. Yeah, I love looking out for stuff like that. So, I say, it, it, it's not the first time I have brought this sort of stuff up, folks. But mm. uh, but, I say, but if anything, this is one of those rare occasions where the recycled animation actually works in Winnie the Pooh's favor in this case. For yeah. this particular sequence especially. Yeah, yeah I, I like um, looking out for things like that. But with Disney, like, you know, it very rarely, if ever, takes you out of the moment because you're, you know invested yeah. in everything else that's going on so so what if they have to cut corners every now and then yeah uh which we, i say which um which we'll get which i which i'll get into when um uh, when i'm when i get around to recording robin hood because that phony king of england sequence is probably one of the most famous pieces of recycled animation in all of disney just the entire <laughs> sequence the, from let's say jungle book snow white aristocats uh, probably, probably a couple of others on top of that as well, but yeah, I was like, I said, just yeah. that whole sequence is probably one of the most famous examples of using so much recycled animation just for that particular song. Yeah, yeah, and and like just think, you know, um, with stuff with when Disney does it, you you don't care because the films themselves are so charming compared yeah. to something like Titanic the animated musical where oh, you don't care. No. And it's a, and the recycled animation in that one is insane. Oh boy, <laughs> were they even trying for that one? Not really, no. 
<laughs> yeah, probably best to keep that. Uh, probably best to keep that one to the side, folks. <laughs> but yeah, once I say once that whole heffalumps and woozle scene is uh, is done, but like, but like I say, it. But like I say, the similarities it has to pink elephants. I was like, to me, it's mm. not. To me, it's not as unsettling as pink elephants, but it does still have its yeah. unsettling moments. Oh, definitely. But yeah, I, I, I would agree. Like the pink elephant sweat is worse. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, <clears throat> but yeah. Uh, but so once that whole scene is out of the way, um, Pooh ends up waking up, and uh, yeah, it's now started raining, and his house is flooded. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I say we. Uh, I say then we. Then we cut to, um, I said, we, we get the uh, we get another song here when the rain, rain, rain came down, down, down. Uh, I love that song, yeah. I think I say, it's it's, pro it's probably one of the, it's probably one of the most charming songs of the soundtrack, yeah. I mean, yeah. all of the songs are charming in their own way, really, but that one in particular is mm -hmm. quite it's 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 nice and it really fits it. It it sounds like a rainy song, you know, yeah. Because I, I say, I say, I say, massive kudos again to to the, to the Sherman brothers for being able to uh, be as creative as they were with getting the songs Definitely. put together. But um, <clears throat> I was like, uh, Piglet ends up doing his message in a bottle thing, um, places the bottle, uh, throws it out the window. I say the, the water's already like halfway up his tree at this point. And it hits a point where you just have this like mini waterfall <laughs> coming through his window, and uh, he starts bailing unaware, unaware of the fact that he is sailing down the water on his chair. As he, as he's st still doing his bailing, I mean, I mean, I mean, st I mean, sa safety first, make making sure he doesn't um, get caught in the water. But uh, and then yeah. and then we and then we cr and then we crossfade into. Into poo, uh, ten honeypots he managed to rescue from his house. Now that's a man who's got his priorities straight. Yes, he knows his priorities. Make sure you have enough food for the journey, folks. <laughs> yes, and I love his. I love his um, lyric in that song. I must, must rescue, rescue my, my supper. supper. <laughs> oh boy, but uh, but, see, but, but see, the rain does stop. Uh, the only the only place the uh, the water doesn't reach is Christopher Robin's house, so everyone starts um, reconvening at his house, and then you've got Eeyore still looking for a house for Owl, mind you. Uh, he he finds one. Let's see, it looks nice, but it's a bit damp, and then the house just sinks into the water. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, he, you, you you'll have some yeah. slight problems with water damage. Uh... Mm, yeah, but uh, I say Rue manages to find the uh, the message in a bottle that Piglet um, sent out earlier. Uh, Christopher Robin reads it, and Al goes out to look for um, Piglet. And I, and I love the detail. I love the detail that when um, Piglet is stuttering the word "please," he writes out "p p please." <laughs> yeah, help P -p Piglet. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. And and he, and he puts me in the brackets as well. <laughs> yeah. That's it. That's it. At this at this point when Al is uh, lo looking for um for piglets, he the, the rain stops but it's still very heavily flooded. I can only assume um it's it's a case one of the cases of uh, the river bursting its banks causing the flooding, not the first time that's happened. Yeah. Yeah. But it's um yeah the um let's say so you've got piglet stuck on this stuck on this little whirlpool and uh, and you've got and you've got poo in this honey pot he's he's trying to get the last bit of honey from the from the pot <laughs> yeah and um and then when Al started to go on go on with that, another one of his stories, uh, so, uh, Piglet, uh, uh, sorry to interrupt you, Al, but uh, we're we're kind of approaching a waterfall here at this point, and Al's just completely oblivious to this. Just uh, just please don't interrupt me. That's it. And Piglet's just trying to keep himself from going over the waterfall, but uh, unsuccessful in doing so. 
Pooh goes over as well. Uh, ends up getting out of the jar, and uh, they both uh, they end. Pooh ends up on the chair, and Piglet ends up in the the honey pot. But uh, they're both they're both rescued, and and Pooh ends up having a ends up having a, a hero party because he because he effectively saved Piglet. Um, but uh, and, and yeah, and I love the I love the fact that they actually had a, a special hero honey pot for Pooh here as well. Absolutely, <gasps> you know, just absolutely adorable. Oh you know, yeah, you know, definitely. I actually lost count, folks, of how many times I actually said that's adorable when I was watching the film earlier today. Yeah, yeah, like the the three words that best sum up Winnie the Pooh are adorable, charming, innocent. Yeah, couldn't have said it better myself. Couldn't have said it better. Mm-hmm. But uh, I think um, that someone is Eeyore interrupts and he says he has officially found a house for Al, and it turns out. It's Piglet's house. But uh, in the end, Piglet says, you know what? No, this is no longer my house. This is now Owl's house. And then Pooh decides, you know what? You can come and stay with me. And I mean, that is probably, that is such a noble thing. I mean, how often, yeah. do, you, yeah, how often do you see that sort of thing in a kid's film? Yeah, and and Piglet um, emphasizes earlier that the um, this is the family house tr- handed down by his 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 grandfather, his supposedly yeah. named Trespa- Trespassers William. Yeah. Um, what so do you yeah, it, that it, means? Yeah. Oh, I've just uh, caught on to what the sign actually means. I've just caught on to what the sign actually means. Really? Yeah. The the, the trespassers <laughs> will dot dot dot. I'm not going to finish that, folks. You can fill in the blanks on that one. I've just realized that. Uh, we'll be prosecuted. We'll be... Uh... Uh, let's let's move swiftly on yeah, from that pro- one. Let's move swiftly on before we ruin people's childhood <laughs> and- on that one. Oh, my. That took a anyway. Um... That took a doctor very quickly. <laughs> but, yes. Anyway. Yeah. But, anyway. Um... Piglet gives up the house. It has tremendous importance to tremendous importance to Piglet, and yeah. you know, even though he's saying, you know, this is Owl's house, he's he's saying it teary eyed, and you really feel for him because yeah. you know, and you can actually Owl hear it needs in his a house, well. but but at the same time, this is this is this is Piglet's house. This is his home. Yeah, and you can actually you can actually hear it in his voice at the same time. Yeah, and and you. Your heart really goes out for him. Yeah. That's it. And and Pooh decides, you know what? You can stay with me if you want. And Yep. And, and can can we make this from a one hero, hero party, party to a, a two, two hero, hero party. party? And then and then because it's such a noble thing that Yeah, Piglet's exactly. Doing. And, and that's so sweet. Yeah. I mean, I mean, as like say, how often do you see that sort of thing happen in a kids film? Yeah. Let alone Disney. Mm. But um, I say, I say, and then and then we get what is the last song on the soundtrack. Uh, it's uh, let me get the soundtrack quickly. Yeah, it's uh, hip hip hooray instead of hip hip hooray. It's uh, you, you put hip, the hip hooray. Y- y- yes, just because 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 the way they're actually singing it, it's as if it's as if it actually sounds like hip hip hooray. Hmm. It's it's a it's a subtle difference. Yeah. But uh, again, it's an it's another it's another example of how it works in the film's favor. Hmm. And and uh, and at the end at the end of this short, uh, that's I uh, you get a uh, hip hip hooray from Winnie the Pooh and Piglet to book closes end the short. But again, we get a transition into. The last short, which is Winnie the Pooh and Tigger 2, uh, which the narrator states is going to involve a lot of bouncing and and states um, specifically that it's going to be mainly about Tigger, but Pooh is going to be in it as well. Starts off in his thoughtful spot, and then we see the first of many times we see 
Tigger just doing his signature uh, jump onto screen barrel roll. Hello, I'm Tigger. T I double G R. That spells Tigger. Yeah. But I say it's absolutely. I think he's just like, um, Pooh's just like, yeah, uh, you've, uh, you've kind of bounced me before. And, and, um, and Tigger's like, uh, I have? I was like, oh, oh yeah, yeah, I have. Yeah. <laughs> say, and then, <gasps> and then, uh, and, I say, and then he, and then he has his uh, TTFN, ta ta for now, onto Piglet. Which apparently was um, improvised by it Paul was imp- It was improvised as well as, as well as the, uh, the laugh that Tigger has. Tigger's yeah. Laugh and the TTFN, those were ad libbed by Paul Winchell. Mm-hmm. And 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 they've now become in, important parts of the character too. Yeah. And I think and 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 it's another fine it's another fine example of how uh, endearing these characters are to all of us. Yep. Yeah. So I so say he's he's going. I say Tigger's just going about bouncing on the people, uh, and then, and then it hits a point where he's uh, one bounce, one bounce too many on Rabbit, and all the veg, all the vegetables are just like all over the place, and it's like, oh no, my vegetables are ruined. And then, and then Rabbit has a, a small meeting with himself, Pooh, and Piglet. It's like, uh, we need to try and stop uh, Tigger from doing all his bouncing, but. Um, they end up going in. They end up going to a part of the uh, Hundred Acre Wood where it ends up being really misty on that day. And uh, despite despite his uh, despite Rabbit's best efforts, uh, yeah, uh, do- doesn't quite work in uh, as far as getting him uh, getting Tigger lost is concerned. Um, so Tigger Tigger realizes Tigger realizes he's gone a bit too far ahead. He he ends up he ends up uh, calling out for uh, the rest of his uh, rest of his crew, and and then he ends up shouting into this little spout on the log, and, and you just you just hear the <laughs> echoing, and you're just like, oh yeah, that's one way to get someone's attention, and uh, it's just like... <laughs> and then and then on the edge of the log, his tail gets stuck. It's just like. <clears throat> <laughs> and then, and then, rabbit just like ever so slightly, just pos- just like slowly decides to let's take let's take this out. And then I was like, I, just, I love when those sort of gags are used. I was like, just I was like, on the last attempt, yeah. <laughs> unaware of the fact that it's actually free now. As he pulls it, and then he just ends up falling back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then Tigger just continues on his way. To search for uh, rabbit poo and piglet, it's uh, it's just absolutely, absolutely brilliant. But uh, yeah, the um, in regards, I was like, I was like, I was like, just just that gag there. I was like, it's 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 one of my favorites in just all of them um, in, in all of animation in general. I mean, it, it's oh not, yeah. Not the first time it's been used in something like uh, Looney Tunes or Tom and Jerry, things mm. like that. And it's, like, it's such a simple formula, but it it usually just works so well. Yeah, I think it's it's one of it's probably one of it's definitely up there as one of the more enduring um, uh, gags used in uh, in animation. Mm-hmm. I think. Uh, but but um, I think I, th- I think it's inevitable as far as uh, timeless uh, running gags are concerned. Uh, yes. Because, uh, as far as as far as those sort of running gags are concerned, the ones that no matter how many times you see them, you still get you still get a good laugh out of them. You mm-hmm. you, you get you get this guy who's just like he's like oh this guy continue and then imitates him to the point where the character they're mocking is just like standing there behind them and then everyone's just like bug-eyed shocked and they're just like and then he's just like he's right behind me isn't he (laughs) (laughs) and animaniacs did such a genius spin on that gag uh, when it was um, Slappy the Squirrel, that's who it was. It was Slappy the Squirrel. Um, uh, the the shocks look on whatever the other squirrels. Fit. Um, yeah, 
uh, uh, the squirrel stop he's looking after and say, oh, I, I know that look. That, that means the person, yada, yada, yada. Does a huge club from her bag, boom, was behind me. And I'm just like, how is the Animaniac so clever with this sort of thing? My favorite variation on that was from um, an episode with Futurama. I can't remember <laughs> who the person was, but what, but Bender was saying something about her. And, and oh, says, of course. Oh, God. She, she's right behind me. She's right behind me, isn't she? She's right behind me. <laughs> no, I'm right in front of you. <gasps> oh, I say, I, I, I say, even, even, that, even, even that variation's been used a couple of times before, but one of the best ones that was used uh you might want to cover uh say children you may want to cover your ears for this one uh um, family show yeah you may want to cover your ears for this one south park big longer and uncut oh yes that one Can't that a, one yes a big song and dance about it and i think the song stops and he's just like wait turns around and kyle's mom's behind him and he's like Oh, <laughs> oh, expletive. <laughs> yes, like, like I said, uh, okay, okay, you can uncover the children's ears now because we're going to go back to Winnie the Pooh. Yeah, that's it. Well, that, it's not the first time we've gone off on a tangent, and it probably won't be the last in this series. <laughs> but, oh, no, 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 but, but yeah, the uh, that's it. Um, yeah, um, that's the same. I say, uh, our threesome rabbit, poo, and piglet, they're, they're trying to make their way out of the mist, but uh, unfortunately, they end up still being stuck at the same sandpit they've been effectively going around in circles in. <gasps> and then Rabbit just decides, you know what, I'm going to go off on my own to try and uh, find a way out of here. Uh, so, and then Pooh and Piglet end up, decide, end up waiting and waiting and waiting to the point where uh, Pooh's tummy starts to rumble, and um, <laughs> this is this is another little fun note that I um, uh, that, so a, a couple of other um, uh, fun notes that I put in here. Uh, uh, rabbit saying, "Let us say, uh, if I was lost, I wouldn't know where I'm going." I said, "I'm just like Ugh. Um, rabbit. You kind of already are lost, but uh, but the thing, but the thing with Pooh saying that that his." Uh, his rumbly in his tumbly knows where to go. And Piglet's is like, <laughs> does it? And this is what, and this is what I put, this is what I put in, in my notes, word for word. And I quote, of course he does. He's the prototype of Uganda Knuckles. He always knows the way. I could actually picture somebody editing that particular scene. <laughs> Because with, uh, with with Piglet questioning, uh, do you? And then some, and then the Uganda Knuckles clip. Follow me. I know the way. <laughs> I know the way. Yeah. And and no folks that and no folks that does not come across as racist. That is legitimately how Uganda Knuckles sounds, and it is my and it is my impersonation of him, if you will. If anybody has a problem with it, uh, just might I suggest keeping it to yourself because. Not the sort of thing I want to be dealing with in the comments. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, anyway, uh, Pooh and Piglet do manage to, um, Pooh and Piglet, they do manage to get out. So there we go. Proof that he did know d -way. Yep. <laughs> and then, <laughs> and, and, then you, and then you just hear this slow crescendo building and then surprise, Tigger comes back out. And then he's just like, <laughs> he's just like, hang on. Where's that old long floppy-eared guy? Like, where's Rabbit? And, Where uh, is old long ears? Yeah. And uh, they explained that uh, Rabbit's lost. And uh, yeah, uh, this is another somewhat unsettling scene here, folks. Uh, especially, especially for those that... What's the best way of, what's the best way of going about this? Have, like, PTSD symptoms, if you will. Or anxiety, maybe? That ties into it as well. That, that works, yeah. I say, uh, anxiety, PTSD. I say, I say the two sort of like connected with each other, if you will. Um, but yeah, the, um, I say, he, he's hearing all these, he's hearing all these noises, uh, the frogs croaking, the caterpillar crunching on the leaves. And he's, 
and he he goes to the point where he ends up with um, a, a panic attack, a panic attack, and you just see the, the spiraling in his eyes, and uh, I'm just like, yeah, well, thanks for the nightmare fuel. Yeah, and um, that scene um, in particular, that's what I was referring to earlier when I talked about the fluid movement, the way um, Rabbit is panicking against the tree. Like, it's very, it's animated not entirely differently from the rest of the movie, but subtly yeah. differently to the point where you can recognize, ah, that's that's Don Bluth's doing. Mm. Yeah. But uh, after, after, after all that, you'll see, he ends up shouting for help, and and then lo and behold, Tigger comes in to save the day, and they end up get they end up getting their way uh, out of um, out of the mist, and then we and then and then we get to uh, like what would, uh, I would assume would be the penultimate chapter of the book, where it's um, where they end up uh, with snow in the Hundred Acre Wood, and it's. And here we've got Tigger meeting up with Rue to go uh, for Rue to go and play with Tigger, and um, and you've got Rabbit skating on the ice by himself. He's happy that there's no Tigger to deal with, uh, but then Tigger ends up going onto the ice himself, uh, decides to try and go onto his tail, and uh, yeah, <laughs> it goes south very quickly. Not south as in they plummet through the ice. Otherwise, that would be very traumatizing for the kids. Especially, yeah. after, especially after some of the darker moments that we saw in their earlier films. Uh, yeah. But uh, let's say he's, um, it goes south in the sense that uh, Tigger cannot control how he's spinning. Uh, collision course with rabbits. And um, Tigger ends up falling, uh, ends up sliding into a huge... Uh, Huge pile of snow, and Rabbit ends up in his house with just everything destroyed around him. Why does this always happen to me? <laughs> and and Rue, and Rue showing concern, you know, as 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 any um, as any good kid would. That's like Tigger, are you okay? And then Tigger pops out of the snow. Yeah, Tiggers don't like ice skating. <laughs> yeah, and then. Oh boy! Uh, they, then, then, then they decide, you know, let's just do some good old bouncing, and they decide to go and bounce up a tree to the point where they almost bounce clean out of the book. And one particular <laughs> camera shot of uh, Tigger looking down. So yeah, thanks Disney. Not only have you given me some nightmare view, you've given me a case of vertigo. <laughs> Lovely. Yeah, and and it, it's not the first time I've actually had uh, cases of them. Um, uh, like it's small cases vertigo. of ver vertigo, um, not necessarily from watching films, but from like games that I've played. In particular, the uh, yeah. particular, like the the final mission of uh, one of the Ace Combat uh, games, uh, where where you're going up this huge tower in um, in, in in your in your fighter jet. Uh, so just that particular, just just doing that particular part there. So I was I was getting like. I was I was starting to get a vertigo to the point where I had to like pause that particular, I had to pause the game a couple of times just to try and get my bearings again. But uh, mm. I, I managed to beat the game. It was it was challenged. I think Ace Combat uh, Ace Combat Seven to be specific. Skies Unknown. It's on Game Pass right now on Xbox for those that want to play it. Um, I love the soundtrack, especially the song Daredevil, which is like towards the end of the game. I say, uh, but overall, great game. Great story, and um, I say it, it. It is. It does. It does have its challenges, to say the least. Um, but um, mm. but, I, but I think the best way to get the proper experience of that is being able to uh, like uh, adjust the controls accordingly, so that you actually you actually feel like you're controlling a fighter jet. But uh, but yeah, and you've got and you've got Ru still being as cheerful happy playful self he decides to use tigger's tail as a swing and so you're like stop you're rocking the forest and uh, <laughs> and and tigger's just left there for a while he's just left there for a while yeah and you've got poo going round, going around in circles in this little um this little circular patch 
unaware of the fact that it's his footprints that he's following. And then Piglet's footprints end up joining the fray as well because Piglet decides to help him with his uh, tracking. And then, they <laughs> just hear, and then they just hear this loud, hello. And they're just like, wait, okay, what's up? What's up? What's up? What's going on? What's going on? And, and Pooh thinks it's a Jaguar. A Jag. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, it's, but yeah, despite that, despite that, uh, Rue ends up shouting for Pooh and Piglet, and it turns out it's just Tigger and Rue stuck in a tree. And then, and, and you, I'll say, the, the way the way they're animating the fact that they actually jump between the pages as if it's like uh, some sort of like ledge sort of like, some sort of like a, a ledge you need to jump over I see yeah I see, I see just another fine example of why I love the um so like uh, page transitions if you will mm. it's it's all done so cleverly yeah but um I see, it's as they uh, Prune Piglet, they decide, let's let's try and get some help. Uh, Chris Robin comes along. You've got Kanga there as well. Uh, don't think Eeyore's there. Uh, Ra- Rabbit's definitely there. Um, and y- then, yes. And then, yeah. Um, and then Rabbit effectively holds Tigger to his word that once I climb down here, I'm never going to bounce again. And Rabbit actually holds him to that, which is Kind of mean spirited, yeah, yeah, and and yeah, and the bit where he um uh, says um oh then we can leave him up there forever. I'm like, dude, come a bit extreme. Yeah, so like I say, that's that's very mean spirited. Yeah, but uh, I mean, I mean, like you know that generally speaking, there's no real um malice in any of these characters, but some with things like that, Rabbit is the only one who comes close to being like, hmm, you're. <laughs> You're one of the least nice people here. Yeah, but see, but it, but, see, but, uh, but the thing is, there isn't really like a real antagonist in this film. If you will. no, no, see, not at all. And the last and the last time that happened was, uh, let's have, oh, I've got it here somewhere. Uh, um, yeah, there it is. Um, it's the first animated. It's the first film from Disney to not include a main antagonist since Dumbo, and that was like thirty-five plus years beforehand. <laughs> well, technically twenty-five plus because if because we're go, if we're going by the, re, the release date of the well, shorts. yeah. But but as far as uh-huh. but as far as the film as a whole, nineteen seventy-seven. We're going by nineteen seventy-seven rules here. So yeah, thirty-five plus years. Yes. Since they had a film that didn't have a primary antagonist, but mm. but, they, but just but they just with that with that final scene there, Rabbit did come across as pretty antagonistic. Yeah, but uh, but say uh, but say another say another uh, another clever piece of um, another clever piece of animation for this bit where where uh, the narrator and Tigger are just like having a small conversation here. Uh, the narrator's trying to suggest how to get, um, how to get Tigger down. And then the, I say, the way, th- I, say, I can only assume they must have like ro- done some camera rotation for that particular shot where you see, where you see the book rotating 90 degrees. I can only mm. assume they must have done, they must have done something with the camera for that. Mm, and probably. then, and and that and that gives Tigger a safe platform to go on, and then and then so like tilts at about forty five degrees s forty five ish degrees, and then and then it's and then let's just back up to the right position. And Tigger is just so happy that he's back on the ground that he feels like he could bounce. And Rabbit's just like, nope. <clears throat> Among Us emergency meeting, you promised you wouldn't bounce. On camera focus. Oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You'll say, you'll say, Among Us emergency meeting. And Rabbit's just like, no, no, you promised you wouldn't bounce. Yeah, rabbit sauce on that one, folks. <laughs> and it's it's not the first time I've it's not the first time I've talked about Among Us on here, folks. <laughs> maybe I should actually start doing some among maybe I should start doing some Among Us on this channel. 
Yeah, that might be interesting. Yeah. I mean, I mean, they, I mean, the game just got a new map recently as well, so opportunities oh, yeah. there. But, mm-hmm. uh, but uh, I'll, I'll cross that bridge when we get to it. But uh, yeah, yes, of course. But, uh, it, but, uh, it, get, it gets really and, sad. And, and when Rabbit says, when Rabbit says, you know, you, you you gave your word, no bouncing. Tigger just gets such a crestfallen look on his face that yeah. You, your not heart breaks teen- for him. Yeah, not even a teensy winsy bounce. And Rabbit's just standing his ground. Not even a smidgen of a bounce. And then you just see Tigger just walking off and you're just like, wow, I hope you're happy with yourself, Rabbit. Yeah. And, and, and everyone, man- they managed to convince Rabbit that, yeah, the old, tig- the old Tigger was better. Mm-hmm. But, uh, and then at that point, he does his signature uh, jump onto the screen, barrel roll on top of them. And then, Tigger, and then Tigger just gets everyone bouncing to the wonderful thing about Tigger's one last time. And then, yep. sadly, we do come to the end of the story where, you know, they, oh. yeah, the, the last chapter where they effectively say goodbye to the end, uh, to, to the end of the film. Yes, this... This last specially made chapter, specially created just for this film, and it yeah. it gets to me. It's based based on the um, last chapter of uh, the House on Pooh Corner. I want to say Corner, I'm yeah. pretty sure that's the book it comes from. Yeah. And every every time I watch um, this film, and in particular when I watch this scene, I feel I feel myself tearing up, and it's. It's it's hard to it's hard to blame you for that one because because it is it, it is it is a really it is somewhat of a sweet way to effectively end the film because it's, especially mm-hmm. those especially those last couple of lines where he's like yeah. promise you won't forget me even when I'm a hundred and then and Pooh's just like I I won't I won't Christopher I promise like yeah oh it it tugs at the heartstrings yeah. And then Chris is like, not even when I'm a hundred. And then Pooh just asks, how old will I be then? 99. And that actually ties in to the fact that Pooh Bear was a first birthday present for the actual Christopher Robin, who was A.A. Mm-hmm. Milne's son. Mm-hmm. And, and, and then the narrator finishes off just with simply where a boy and a bear will always be waiting, and then the book closes, yeah. and a nice little wink from the uh, from the, the actual uh, Pooh Bear in his classic uh, red shirt, and there mm-hmm. we go. That is it. That is the many adventures of Winnie the Pooh. Wow. Yep. And I... um, last last um, bit of trivia I've got here. Yeah. Um, it has a. It's the film itself has a perfect 100% on Rotten Tomatoes, but not everyone um, is a fan of it. There's one person in particular who didn't like it, a writer called um, Ruth Hill Vigas, uh, Vigas, sorry, um, who wrote a book called A Critical History of Children's Literature. Ah, And um, she said that Disney, and she said that um, Disney's Winnie the Pooh movies, quote, destroyed the integrity of the original books. You're always gonna have. At the end of the day, you're always gonna have somebody that's like that. Yeah, there's always gonna be someone quibbling with um, an adaptation. Uh, personally, as far as I'm concerned, this this movie perfectly captures the childhood innocence of mm-hmm. the book, uh, of the books rather. Mm-hmm. Like it, 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 it nails it. As far as I'm concerned, I suppose yeah. because you know. Um, uh, so some people, um, some English viewers, like who grew up reading the having the books read to them by their English parents or reading yeah. it to their kids with their English accents, mm-hmm. they would have been so used to the Englishness of the books to hear these um, American, American voices, yeah. actors doing it and and the Americanisms added into it. I can understand why that would be jarring, yeah. But at the end of the day, the spirit is still there. Absolutely, yeah. And I and I think that's one thing. One thing about. Um, most Winnie the Pooh products that uh, most Winnie the Pooh movies that I've seen, a lot of them sometimes bring me close to tears because there is just such yeah. uh, like 
such a pure good spirit to it all mm -hmm. you know yeah that's it and, and, and i've actually and i've actually just looked it up on rotten tomatoes and uh, yeah folks he's not joking it does have 100 on rotten tomatoes one of the very few films that i know of that actually has 100 on rotten tomatoes i mean the audience rating is still pretty good score 88 mm -hmm. so fresh from both the critics yeah and the audience the Although, uh, uh, granted, um, there was a movie I saw a few years ago which has a perfect 100, which I absolutely hated. So, again, you know, different yeah. strokes for different folks. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. And, and, and that's why sites like Rotten Tomatoes have the audience rating score yeah. for, for people like us. Like, uh -huh. just, just, just like big movie fans that do stuff like this on YouTube, uh, on YouTube that can go yep. on to Rotten Tomatoes and give their reviews on that site. Yeah, or, it's always good to have to have the discussion, the differing yeah. point of view. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, um, so like I say, that's our first trip into the 100 Acre Wood, but it definitely won't be the last on this show. No, sir. Yep, let's, yep, let's get the class, let's get my King of Isolation logo back in the background there. Uh, yeah, so let's say, where do we even begin with summing up how amazing this film is? Oh. I don't know. Um, like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, I mean, I, on I honestly cannot, I mean, I mean, I found like very, very few faults with this film mm. and I say, I say and would you I'm I'm just gonna get into the scores just now. So the so uh yeah and uh, and as always uh, these these scores these scores are um uh these scores are about a 10 and then we and then I run the numbers through and then we get a percentage and then we see where it pops on uh, the board. I say but again I say I've I've done this I say this is the um let's see this is this is the first of uh nine films that I need to get done before I go into the Renaissance period uh, where mm. I'm, I'll say like, so I'm probably just going to spend the whole summer just focusing on the Renaissance films. And, um, and uh, talking of which, uh, I, I did speak to Alan about this on, uh, uh, last week when I was discussing when we were free to get uh, episodes done. Uh, I've got him on board for the Hunchback of Notre Dame. I am very much, I mean, I mean, just the Disney Renaissance in general, I am very much looking forward to covering in great oh, yeah. detail. Because that that was our childhood, effectively. Basically, yeah. Those were our Disney movies. Yeah. Because, I mean, I say, my mum will, I say, I say, like, uh, our parents, for instance, uh, also, they'll have grown up with, uh, like, uh, Jungle Book, Winnie the Pooh, uh, like, th those sort of films. And, um, mm -hmm. and, and those films actually did get re-released um, at cinemas uh, uh, on occasion when, when we were kids. And there were even occasions, uh, say, mm -hmm. uh, there was one point where the Fox and the Hound was at cinemas at one point. And uh, my mom took me and um, uh, my older sister uh, to go and see it. So, I, mean, I, mean, I mean, just with the fact that there was a lot of Disney films coming out on VHS um, at the time, I thought, oh, I thought, wow, okay, we've got all these Disney films coming out at the same time, unaware of the fact that some of them were actually older than others. <laughs> but yeah, but anyway, yeah. I uh, say so for those who don't know how this, I so say like uh, the five subjects for those that are new to the series. Uh, the five subjects are story, characters, visuals, soundtrack, and uh, legacy. I did have that started off as like the test of time, like uh, how well the film holds up, but. I changed it to legacy because I think legacy works better. Like, um, like the impact yeah. the film has had, uh, not just um, for like the film industry, but like uh, if it's appeared in other forms of media or even spawned its own franchise. So yeah, um, I mean, as I mean, I will say this before I even start, before I even watched the film earlier today, folks. Uh, the uh, I had, I had, I was already firmly set on the score for the legacy and you'll understand why but yeah 
Uh, the story, I get a story I gave a 10. Honestly, couldn't fault the story. I say just just the way they were able to link all three of the um the shorts together to make one to make one big um to make one big story. And that that really mm-hmm. worked in uh, the film's favor. I say the way they were able to make those links between the shorts, it was really well done uh, on them on yeah. Disney's front for that. Yep. Yeah. And and the thing I just um uh realized um thinking back on all the different shorts and how it works all as one story i just realized how um they mentioned in the uh um the first one uh christopher robin helping eeyore out on uh, a warm summer's day then in the next one they have uh, the rains and then you have the mist and then the snow so it takes Going us through, through all four a whole seasons Oh my word! I never even th- I never even thought about that. I literally just thought of that as we wow. were doing this. I thought I was thinking back to the mist, and then I thought, wasn't there a line at the beginning about uh, um, summer? And I'm like, yeah, there was. We've been we've been through a whole year with these characters. Absolutely incredible. Which which which, which really ties in which really tie, which effectively ties into when the films were released. Mm-hmm. But uh, I said, like I say, the, sto- the story gets a ten. The way the way the, they were able to link the shorts together, honestly, cannot fault it as as a whole. And I said, I just feel they I just feel they did a fantastic job with being able to tell these stories in the way they did. Mm. Yeah, characters. That is also an- another ten. Everyone was perfectly cast, and yep. As, and uh, the way that the way the voice actors were able to bring these characters to life, especially Paul Winchell as Tigger, I mean that is without a doubt. Yes, that is without a doubt the highlight of uh, the whole film. Seeing Paul Winchell as Tigger and just being able to see the energy that yes. he was able to bring to that character, especially it was again cannot falter in any way. No, nope, not at all. Yeah. Um, I'll say visuals. Visuals, I gave a nine, but that's mean. That's mean. I'll say. I'll say the only. I'll say the only fault is like some some of the um, some of the recycled animation, but but it does it does gain those points back with the um, with the way they were able to do the page transitions. Uh, yeah. So the page transitions. The page transitions really do bump up the score on the on the visual. Um, uh, department, but as like I say, it's, it's just the recycled animation that just uh, loses a loses a point for me. But uh, but apart from that, recycled animation aside, but, but of course that that's that was to be expected. Um, that's to be expected with uh, Disney at the time. They they were prone to yeah. doing recycled animation. But I say, I, I, th- I think I might. Yeah. I think I mean I say I, but like I said, I, I can forgive them for doing the recycled animation because of the budget that they had. But but like I but like I said regarding the page transitions, I say I say the way we I say some of the page transitions we described uh, throughout this um, throughout this episode, I say really it really does help bump the score up on the uh, the visuals department and also being able to see uh, Christopher Robin's uh, play uh, bedroom with all the characters from the book mm-hmm. uh, before before we actually. Before we go, before we actually go into the book itself, and um, I say, I say the the soundtrack I soundtrack I also gave a night. I say I say it's fantastic. The songs are the songs are really the songs are really well done. And um, I say this I say the score. It's I say it, it, it's difficult to difficult to point out any faults in the. Um, in the score, I mean, I say the, the motifs, the, uh, the Winnie the Pooh theme motifs they use throughout the film, as well. That is, it's really well done. But part of me does feel that they could have used a bit, uh, a bit more uh, film score in, in the film. But that's that's really all about it. Uh, I I just felt there wasn't enough film score to be able to justify giving it a ten. But, but but that but at the end of the day that's that's like the only that's the only like that's, 
it's, it's, it's not so much it's not so much a criticism it's more more that you could have maybe you you wanted more perhaps. yeah i say, I say if, if there was more if there was more film score there for the film i i could have i could have se- i could have seen myself giving it a 10 but apart from that the songs are great and the and the score that they used throughout the film the the motifs absolutely fantastic throughout hmm. the legacy i say this is the score i say I was already firmly set on on the score for this one, and you're about to see why, folks. The legacy <laughs> got an eleven. It's only the second, <laughs> yeah, only the second time in Kingdom of Isolation that I've given any of those top any of those um, scorecards an eleven. Last time I did that was Sleeping Beauty. Coincidentally enough, also gave the legacy an eleven there because my guest there did bring up the fact that Mal. Maleficent, the Descendants trilogy, and I thought, "Yep, that gets an eleven now for that." And <laughs> and Sleeping Beauty is the only film so far that has a score that's over a hundred percent. So the overall score, the overall score for Winnie the Pooh, uh, the Many Adventures of Winnie the Pooh, is a massive ninety-eight percent, which puts it third on the board, in between Fantasia and Snow White. <laughs> absolutely incredible now bear with me folks there's a there's a whole plethora of stuff to go through here in regards to the legacy this franchise has so yeah we have got uh we've gone through the many adventures of winnie the pooh which was the first full-length film that they had uh we also had the 2011 winnie the pooh film just called uh winnie the pooh uh, there the was pool. also there was also some Disney Toon Studios films. You had the Tigger movie, which you've mentioned previously. The Piglet movie, which is mm. uh, which is one of, which is probably one of my favorites because I, I remember watching that a lot when I was younger. And I say there was, and uh, I say, and don't worry, folks, I am going to get to those films uh, eventually. Uh, In time, also, yes. There was also uh, Pooh's Heffalump movie. Uh, you also had a live action film with Ewan McGregor as a grown up Christopher Robin. Mm-hmm. I say, and I, say, I, I remember, I, say, I remember actually going to see this with uh, with one of my friends uh, uh, in the cinema, and we loved every moment of that film. I, was, I mean, I mean, even so I. I mean, even at the start, I was struggling to hold the tears back. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Another one, um, uh, not Disney related, but I don't know if you've seen uh, a movie called Goodbye, Christopher Robin. That I have seen. Yeah. Uh, uh, Dominic, uh, Dominic Gleeson, I think. I think Dom- his name Domino, is. Domino Gleeson. Yeah. That's the one. Yeah. Yeah. He, he, he's, he, he has, he does the role of A.A. Uh, a. Milne. Yeah. Yes. And, yeah, and it's I have a really good. One, yeah. Um... yeah. Come very think, good character study yeah coming to think of it i wonder if that i wonder if that film's on disney plus because it was done by i think fox searchlight pictures disney owned fox now ah uh, so maybe uh no it's not there it'll just it'll just be the uh it'll just be the disney christopher robin film that'll be there uh, fair, fair enough i mean i mean i mean goodbye christopher robin could be there at some point on disney plus yes just not at the moment yeah, not at the moment. Uh, there was also a lot of uh, there was also a lot of direct-to-video films as well. Mm. Winnie the Pooh. Uh, the first one being Pooh's Grand Adventure: The Search for Christopher Robin. It was actually called Winnie the Pooh's Most Grand Adventure over here in the UK. And um, yes. okay, that that that's a, that's another that's another one of my favourite um, films that uh, involves Winnie the Pooh. It's just just the whole Grand Adventure feel of the film. And, yeah, and, and surprisingly uh, intense at a few moments. Yes, which which did crit- which did which was somewhat criticised by, uh, by by the critics um, at the time. But and I uh, I kind of get why. Yeah, but but I mean, if if anything, I I I feel that worked in the film's favour because you. I mean, for it to be a grand adventure and not have those intense moments, it's sort—it was sort of like yeah. Then it then 
then it would feel like just another Winnie the Pooh story. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, I think. But I think there was uh, there was also seasons of giving. There was um, there was also uh, there was also one uh, from the uh, TV series The Book of Pooh. It was it was one called Stories oh, from yes. the Heart, which I would which was uh, just a, a compilation of like different episodes from uh, from the sh- uh, from the show. Uh, Very merry Pooh year, springtime with Rue, Pooh's Heffalump Halloween movie, Super Sleuth Christmas movie, Tigger Pooh and a musical too, Super Duper yeah. Super Sleuths as well, and um, and then you've was, got all... was... yeah, go ahead. I was just thinking back to think back to the house on Pooh Corner. I mm-hmm. I distinctly remember um, watching. Uh, an episode where I was very, very young. And there was one thing in particular that was referenced in it, which has stuck with me for life. Mm-hmm. And it was one of the, my first ever references to this. I can't remember the full context, but I think um, Owl, was go- Owl was going through his uh, book collection or something. And mm-hmm. he showed Winnie the Pooh one by, by someone called William Shakespeare. And Winnie the Pooh <laughs> said, and, and Winnie the Pooh says, who is William and why is he shaking his spear? And, Pig- <laughs> and, and, and Piglet says, and, and Piglet says, he sounds very fierce. <laughs> that is brilliant. That is absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. And that and that stuck with me. I I I suddenly started hearing looking out for references to Shakespeare, and it it then barreled from there. Yeah. And um, the, the the short films that they had, the short films that they had as well. They had, uh, w- as it, we've we've mentioned them already. Uh, Honey Tree Blossom Day Ticket Two discovers the seasons. Day for Eeyore, cartoon all star to the rescue. There was a Christmas special as well. Winnie the Pooh and Christmas Two. Uh, yeah, I I remember. Um, are, are you familiar with the cartoon All Stars to the Rescue? By the way, that. Uh, I've, I'm, that's a that's a strange one. I, it's a bunch I'm sure of, I've heard this before somewhere. It's a bunch of famous cartoon characters getting together to do an anti-drug PSA. Ah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've, it's I've, weird. I've just I've just spotted it, and I've just seen the uh, the promotional poster. Slimer from Ghostbusters, Alvin and the Chipmunks, Huey, Dewey, and Louie from DuckTales, Garfield, the Smurfs, Daffy Duck's and, in there at one point as well. My and word. for some reason, Alf. Oh, yeah, I can just about see him on the uh, at the back. Just about see him, yeah. That I definitely was not expecting, but there you go, folks. <laughs> uh, uh, one of the Christmas it's, it's weird it's yeah. weird the places you'll go to in the kingdom of isolation yeah <laughs> uh, boo to you to uh winnie the pooh thanksgiving and a valentine for you how's about that uh the tv series some of them we've mentioned already we've got the um uh, we've got uh, welcome to pooh corner the new adventures of winnie the pooh uh, which you mentioned briefly, Book of Pooh. I've mentioned uh, My Friends Tigger and Pooh, which was a Disney Junior series. Hmm. Uh, and we there was um, there was a lot here. Uh, and on the video games front, I I mean, I mean, when it comes to video games, I I, I love going to the video games section here. You've got uh, right. So let's go through these individually. So we've got uh, Winnie the Pooh in the Hundred Acre Wood, um, a single player adventure game. Tigger's Honey Hunt on the Nintendo 64 and PlayStation. Uh, Winnie the Pooh Adventures in the 100 Acre Wood on the Game Boy Color. Pooh's Party Games, which was effectively... Uh, it was inspired by the Mario Party series. Piglet's Big Game, which was a, which was a movie tie-in to Piglet's Big Movie. I, I remember playing Piglet's Big Game on the, uh, on, the play, on, the, on the PS2, and I lost count of how much time I actually sank into it. Uh, yeah, uh, Pooh's Rumbly Tumbly Adventure, Ready to Read, Ready to Math, Disney Learning, Honey Trouble, Home Run Derby, a Japanese Flash baseball game. The ge- and the, ge- <laughs> the this, this is what it reads. This is what it reads here. Uh, Winnie the Pooh's Home Run Derby is a 2010 Japanese Flash baseball video game published at the Walt Disney Pictures website. 
The player controls Pooh in order to defeat his eight friends in a baseball match. The game won cult following in early 2013 and became a viral hit due to its extreme difficulty. This is Japan we're talking about here. They are known for making ridiculously difficult games. We're looking at you, Japanese <laughs> Mario 2. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, the Japanese version of Mario 2 was apparently too hard for, uh, for the Western audience, especially when the fact that you had uh, the poison mushroom. Yeah. And the Japanese version of Mario 2 wouldn't actually make it uh, to a Western audience until the Super Mario All-Stars, which included all the, uh, which included the, um, which included like uh, the original Mario 1, 2, and 3, the US Mario 2, the Japanese Mario 2, Super Mario 3. And I'm pretty sure that one, of, I'm pretty sure there was a, an All Stars Plus or something along those lines that included Super Mario World. Yeah. That's it. And, and in the Japanese version of Mario 2, in the All Stars version of the game, the poison mushroom is actually a lot clearer to see compared to on the NES. But uh, yeah, uh, and some of the other appearances that uh, they've had, they had a, there was a Disney Friends game in 2007 uh, on the Nintendo DS that was loosely based on some of the, uh, that was loosely based on several animated Disney films. Uh, and of course, it's not the first time I've, it's not the first time I've brought this up and it definitely won't be the last. This is another film that was involved in the world of Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, like I said, I've lost count of how many films have been included in Kingdom Hearts in some capacity. I mean, Snow White, um, Dumbo was one of the uh, summons. Uh, Pinocchio was one of the worlds in Monstro. Uh, what else was there? Uh, Cinderella, Alice in Wonderland, Peter Pan, Lady in the Tramp wasn't included. Sleeping Beauty was. Uh, Merlin makes an appearance from Sword in the Stone. Jungle Book wasn't mentioned. Aristocats, no. Winnie the, Winnie the Pooh, that was the, the mini, the 100 Acre, that was the mini game world. I mean, I mean, if I were to list all the Disney films that were included in Kingdom Hearts, I'd probably be here all day. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but yeah, take my word for it. There, take my word for it. There is a lot of Disney films that have been included in Kingdom Hearts, especially the Renaissance films. But uh, but yeah, I say it's I say it's for all of that, and apparently there was also. Dis there was also a couple of animated storybooks as well. Yeah, that's, that sounds about right. Uh, so I'm pretty sure I found them somewhere. Uh, there, we there we go. Disney's animated storybook. Because the very first I animated... I remember... Um... Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. No, no, go on. Uh, I think, I think no, 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 you, you finish. That's fine. Because uh, so, I remember the first animated storybook was the uh, it was the Lion King, and it was and it was on like a lot of the Disney VHSs at the time. I think, I think, and it was it was even on it was even on the Lion King VHS itself. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. I was like, I, I was like, I, I've I've done a couple. I've actually done a couple of uh, animated storybooks. Uh, on top of that, I said I did, I did the Lion King. I had Pocahontas. I even had Toy Story at one point as well. <laughs> yeah, but the um, but see the animated storybooks in question for Winnie the Pooh involved two of the shorts. One of the uh, one of them being Winnie the Pooh and the Honey Tree, which was August twenty eighth, nineteen ninety five. And the second one was, if I can find it, there it is, was on Winnie the Pooh and Tigger 2, which was released on April 30th, 1999. Um, so there were, see, the animated storybooks that were made in this, like, this franchise for the games uh, was like Lion King. You had the Winnie the Pooh ones I've mentioned, Pocahontas, Toy Story, Hunchback of Notre Dame. 101 Dalmatians, which was based on the live action remake of the film. And, um, and there was also some elements from the animated film 
as well. Uh, you got you got Hercules as well, my favorite Disney film of all time, folks. Uh, and it was actually rebranded as the it was actually rebranded as the Story Studio for the, uh, for like the Little Mermaid and Mulan. I say they were they were actually I say the the Little Mermaid one was called Ariel's Story Studio, and the I say. Uh, Mulan's one that was still released as uh, Disney's animated storybook, but it was also released as Disney's story studio. And it's the only one from this list that I can find. Yes, it is. It's the only entry that was also released on a home console being the original PlayStation. It was September 14th, 1998 on PC, but it was November 1999 that it came to the original PlayStation. So yeah, I say just, but point being regarding uh, point point being regarding our silly old our silly old bear, it is the legacy this franchise has. I mean, I mean, I couldn't give it anything but an eleven. I mean, it was already. A, I was like, oh yeah. I say before I even watched the film earlier today, folks, I was already decided on the legacy being eleven because I was just like, I can't not mm-hmm. give this an eleven. Otherwise, I'm gonna have people at yeah. my door with torches and pitchforks wanting to burn me. Yeah, but uh, like, like I said at the very beginning, like yeah. Winnie the Pooh is just that much of an icon. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, uh, so like I say, the score. Is a ma- is a massive ninety eight percent, and that puts it third on the board at the moment. Absolutely phenomenal, mm-hmm. and it's and it's not hard to see why. <laughs> no, so I mean, I mean, I think it goes without saying we we cannot recommend this. We cannot recommend this enough. I mean. It is, oh, possi- yeah. it is possibly the best introduction to Winnie the Pooh you could possibly have for the kids. And absolutely. The, the, the closest thing I can think of, you know, if you want to be a traditionalist, um, reading the story, yeah, the original exactly. books to kids. But other, other than that, this is pretty much a, a perfect introduction. Yeah, absolutely. So I seen that there was actually um, a couple of years ago, there was a, uh, I don't know if it was a radio production or straight to CD. Either way, it was um, a dramatized reading of the book with uh, oh. British actors playing the characters, including Stephen Fry as Winnie the Pooh. Wow. This, yeah. this I need to find. This I need to find. <laughs> yeah, that, <laughs> that might it might take me a while, but I'm pretty sure it'll be worth it. But uh, but yeah, that is it for the, <laughs> But yeah, let's uh, say Alan, thanks very much for joining me for this episode, and I'm looking forward to having you back on board later down the road. The let's say as far I look forward as, to being back. Yeah, as far as um, as far as when the films, as far as uh, film release is concerned, then um, so like I say, I'm still going to have these for. Uh, out in like chronological order of when the films were released. Um, so yeah, the next film that will be released, the next uh, episode that will be released will be on The Rescuers, which is the last film of the 70s. Uh, I've already got Alan on board to do The Black Cauldron and Basil the Great Mouth Detective, two very underrated films from this particular era, Absolutely. especially. I mean, I mean, the Black Cauldron is up there as one of the darkest Disney films that's ever been made. And uh, mm-hmm. you'll find out why when we get to that episode. But, uh, but in the meantime, uh, if you guys enjoyed this episode, hit the thumbs up. And if you want to be Dream Chasers like us, hit the subscribe button down at the bottom. Click the bell to join the Dream Chasers notification squad so you don't miss anything that we do on this channel. Alan's going to be back... F- Alan's going to be back for the um, for the Black Cauldron and Basil Gr- the Great Mouse Detective, which means yes, it will be he will be doing back to back appearances on the Kingdom of Isolation. I just need to get <laughs> yeah, I, ju- I just need to get dates sorted out for getting those episodes recorded. But uh, we've still got time. I've still got about three weeks before we hit June. But uh, I, th- I think in many eyes, summer doesn't really kick in until June twenty twenty one, June twenty first, roughly. Yeah, roughly. Yeah. 
yeah. But um, so I've got an extra couple of weeks. Uh, got an extra couple of weeks to play with if I need if I need them. But uh, in the meantime, um, let's say let's say that that's it for this episode. And uh, the next episode um, that will be released will be on the rescuers which was also released in the same year as the many adventures of winnie the pooh but until then we will see you guys next time in the kingdom of isolation <laughs>